Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas for continuing coverage of this year's APA World Pool Championships. I'm your host, Jason Bowman, and I'm joined by the Hall of Fame legend, the striking Viking, Ava Lawrence. Ava, we've come to the end of the road here at the 2023 World Pool Championships, but before we go, we've got one last hurrah, a grand finale, if you will, $20,000 on the line in the World Nine Ball Championship. You know what, over 500 teams competing in this format and has come down to these last two. I'm excited. Nine ball is always kind of fast and exciting. And, um, you know, this is the end of a of a great, great, what, 10 days we've been out here now? Yep, fantastic yeah, fantastic 10 so this days. this should be great. So before we meet our finalists in the Nine Ball World Championship, let's give you a quick breakdown of some of the key rules here. Of course, APA rules apply. The Nine Ball World Championship teams consist of both players, consist both of male and female players with a maximum of eight players allowed on a roster. Each team will choose up to five players to compete here in the championship match. The combined handicap of those five players cannot exceed a total of 23. Players may receive one coaching timeout per game, one point awarded per ball pocketed, two points for pocketing the nine ball, and the players will be racing to their individual ball count with team match points awarded based on the outcome of each match. Now let's meet our championship finalists. We have from Gainesville, Florida, the team of Gambler 1, and from Atlanta, Georgia, we have Control Your Rack 9, and again, competing for $20,000 this afternoon. The players are ready to get started. Let's take you down to the arena for the start of the APA World Nine Ball Championship. And this is Jacob Ritter, skill level five at the table for the team Control Your Rack. Solid break, and that nine ball almost went in the corner pocket to start things off, but came up dry there. So it's going to be Christopher Rodriguez stepping to the table for Gambler 1. Yep, Chris Rodriguez is a skill level 4, Ava, which means he's racing to 31 points. Jacob's got to get to 38 points. So a little bit of a point differential there based on their skill levels. Again, it's a 4 versus a 5. And already, before he takes a single shot, we're going to see a timeout here. That's pretty unusual right off the bat. Normally, you kind of save the time out for a little bit later in the rack, but he sees something that he's worried maybe that Chris can't see in this situation. Huh. We'll see what he came up with other than just pocketing the one. Looks like he's going to be sending the cue ball down for defensive shot right here, or is he going nine ball? No. All right, whatever that was, it didn't quite work. Whatever the plan was there, Jacob Ritter now gets to take charge of the table. Cannot pocket the one on the side, but leaves it right behind the two ball. Yeah, Chris is going to have to kick at this. He can either go to the side rail with a chance of making the one or to the bottom cushion, which could result in more of a defensive shot, sending the cue ball. I mean, the one ball down table, we'll see. It's a little riskier also due to the nine ball being down on this end. He's going to try to go for it here. Easier to make... Contact. Oh, no Watch good. Out. All right, Jacob Ritter back to the table now for Control Your Rack. You know, I mentioned earlier it was over 500 teams. It's actually 582. 582, yeah, closer to oh, 600. 600 teams. Nine ball is on the rise as Jacob Ritter is on the board first. One point to him, that ball pocketed. Now shooting on the two. A nice little tap here should bring him down to play the three ball on the side. Oh, boy. That was a little twist in the stroke. And it got down really quickly. Kind of one-stroked it. 
See how quickly these players can adjust to this championship table here in Pool Dog Arena. Yeah. Full house here looking on in this final match of the World Pool Championships. Would expect these players to have some early nerves. Well, if you don't feel nerves coming in here, then I don't know. Oh, nice draw. He could play a draw shot here, make the nine ball off the two. Yeah, no. Plays Good a defensive safety instead. shot instead. And Chris Rodriguez back to the table. He is a skill level four. Again, that means he's going to need 31 points to win this first match. Chris and his teammates play out of Silver Cues back in Gainesville, Florida. You got to be careful here, Jason. Then he doesn't scratch off the two ball. Oh, he failed to hit it all together. All right. So ball in hand now to Jacob. Jacob and his teammates from Atlanta, Georgia. And a timeout now taken by Control Your Rack. This is Control Your Rack team captain Clayton Fisher. Going to talk things over with Jacob. Two well, early timeouts in this yeah. rack. Well, Jacob's got a few different options. He's looking to, for, to have him shoot the two down in the corner. And again, because this is not your regular straight nine ball. Win on the nine, it's by points. One point for each ball, two for the nine ball. You're usually better off trying to run a few balls if they're laying the way they are right now. Because if you can make this two ball, three in the side, four in the corner, he should be able to get at least three points. Normally, you would kind of look at maybe a billiard on the nine off the two. But that's only going to get you the two points here. He can easily pick up at least three. Two ball falls. Three in the side. Yeah, he'd have been better off shooting a stop shot there because if he shot a stop shot, all he had to do is just make the four and the cue ball would have came out perfectly for the five. Still has a shot at it, but now it's a longer shot and the cue ball is almost frozen on the rail. So a little tester. Big ball here. Nice, nice. shot. Oh, he just overplayed that a little bit, obviously, position-wise. We'll see if he stays with the defensive shots or if he's going to go ahead and try and bank this shot. That's not the. That's probably the best idea because no matter what, he's going to leave a long shot. No, he went for the defense. Chris Rodriguez back to the table, now trailing early in this match. Five points to none. Although Chris does have fewer points needed to win. I give a shout out back to Matthew Bryson. Thank you so much. We see Good you to there, hear from Matt. you again, yeah. buddy. All right, thin cut here. Not going to get much of a position shot either. On the seven, we'll see here. If, same here. Tough to get down for this seven ball. Making the six should not be a problem considering where the nine is. You can miss this pretty good and still have it go off the nine. It's kind of a helper ball there. Made it straight. And he's faced with a couple of options. Do you just try to slice... The combo, you play a billiard or a bank on the seven or a very, very Safe, difficult yeah. hide there behind the eight. He almost got there. And all he's left here is a either obviously a safe or a bank on the seven in the side pocket. If he thins this seven ball on the left side, he could come back. And make the nine with real thin hit if he went that way. Mm -hmm. 
Chance for Jacob Ritter to extend his lead. Unable to pocket the seven. Just misses scratching in the side pocket. Let's see if Chris Rodriguez can pick up his first point of the match here now on this seven ball. Three points, four points available now on the table. So looks like, you know, big trouble. Six, six nothing. If he could pick these up, he would not only close that gap, but he actually would be ahead in points considering that point spread. Chris needs 31. Jacob needs 38. All right, got to hit this pretty pure. Even though the nine ball is so close to the pocket, it's on the rail. Looks like he's queuing it up well. Nope. Mm. Well, opportunity once again for Jacob Ritter. Three points left in this rack on the table. Well, it's a tough combo here. Completely like a backwards cut. He would have loved, obviously, to make the eight, but thin hit here. Tough to judge that combination. Ooh. He avoided the scratch, but he has left Chris with an opportunity to pick up these three points right here. Eight ball drops. Shot on the nine ball for Chris Rodriguez. Two more points. And he does pick up those points. So a six floor six four point split in that first rack. And while we've got a moment, we're going to hear a quick word from our friends at PoolDog.com. Back here at Pool Dog Arena, the rack is ready to go. Chris Rodriguez now with the break for the Gambler 1 team out of Gainesville, Florida. Chris is skill level 4, has 4 points, needs 31 to win the match. Got nine the ball, nine ball, nine ball going. Oh, oh. Oh. oh, my. <laughs> How did that not go in? They wow. got an extra help from the 8 ball also, but still hung right on the lip of the side pocket. Wow, that looked like it was going right in there, too. Well, I th have a feeling it's going in right now. If the one ball even touches any part of that nine, it's going to go in. It'll even get some help from the eight. Got the two on the break. Looking at the one-nine combo. 
Anything but overcutting the one. There you go. That's going to be another two points there for Chris Rodriguez. One that's actually going to take the lead. And quick three points in that rack for Chris. And seven dead balls in that second rack. That was quick, Ava. Kind of I blinked and on to the third rack we go. Yeah, just that fast. Well, we've got a moment. want to make sure we thank all of our sponsors for the APA World Championships. Of course, our friends at PoolDog.com, Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls, and Diamond Tables. Over 350 of them at this year's APA World Championships. See the referee there preparing the next rack. <clears throat> Chris Rodriguez is going to step to the table here with a break. See if he can get that nine ball moving again. <laughs> Chris and his teammates from Gainesville, Florida, Gator Country. Does get the nine ball moving again, but not near a pocket. He got fortunate there, snookered. Dry Jacob, break. Yeah. <clears throat> Eight ball in the way. This is not an easy hit. Oh, he might be able to curve around it just a little bit. Nice oh. try. I don't know. Split hit. No, nope, ball in hand. Yeah. It was close, but yeah, no, not quite. Ball in hand. Chris Rodriguez. Every ball counts here, especially for Chris, who only needs 31 to Jacob's 38. Ooh. Excellently moved the object ball, which is not a foul, just moves it back into position. Yeah, just like on the Pro Tour, you play with cue ball foul only. Pro Tour, we usually have we're foul on all balls in the finals, but here we stay with the same format that we play th throughout league and uh, the rest of this tournament so the balls are supposed to be replaced right where they were or as close to it as both players can agree to jacob ritter back at the table now trailing by two points That's a good shot. He kept his head down nicely there. Still has a tall order on this three ball, though. It goes in that corner pocket, but you would have to slide it in. He's going to go ahead and go for the bank, and that'll, that'll work. Help. That'll work. Backup plan there. Nice. Again, Jacobs is skill level five, so he has to make seven more points in this match. Then Chris, who has a skill level four. That was a good shot, except that he get all the way there. No, sir. Not a bad effort and not a bad leave either.
Chris back to the table now. Shooting on the six ball. I didn't realize it, but yeah, we we could potentially have a, another team from Florida that wins the nine ball championship. Yeah. They won the eight ball. Different area of Florida, but... Very much so. <clears throat> eight ball champions were from the Orlando area. We were talking about how that you do see a lot of teams, Texas, California, Florida, Illinois, Illinois in that Chicago area, especially because there are so many leagues and each league Oof. gets x amount of teams to come out here so it seems a little bit like crazy amount of teams from those areas but that is why it's not like the state per state gets teams right. to come out here yeah it's per league and how many teams there are there so there's got to be at least a half dozen in chicago maybe more like a dozen i don't different leagues right in that in Chicago, area, yeah, yeah, I think there's probably at least a dozen, and way, way, way more than that in, Flo in the state of Florida. Yeah. A big pool Six country ball. there. Yeah. Hi, Peter Balderas. Peter was out here enjoying himself. His, him and his wife were playing in the eight ball event, and their team. Oh, didn't quite get that. Fires that six ball in there. Yeah, left himself a makeable shot, but it could have been a lot easier than that. And at least Jacob had a backup plan there. This one's tricky. Can't really go for the bank here. You're going to get a double, double kiss. Angle's too straight on. So this is where you would love to just clip this side of the seven, have the cue ball come out here, play the seven over here. That's about the only solid defensive shot. Might get lucky enough if you hit just the right speed to get behind the nine. Another timeout being taken by Gambler One here. Very quick timeout. Yeah, he doesn't take too long, does he? Didn't last time either. All right, he's going to go for that defensive shot. Let's see if he can get the perfect speed down, too. How about it? That was textbook, you guys. Let's see if Jacob, can he hit that side of it and still make contact? Yeah, he can. A little bit of left spin here, get a solid hit. Might make it in the corner. How about that corner? Mm -hmm. No. All right, chance for Chris Rodriguez now. Three balls left on the table, four points. I want to give a shout out to all our referees, too, that have been out here all week. Some went home today. We only had a few left for the semifinals and finals today that have also been here. Not the whole week, but week and a half, I should say. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> been, uh, it's been really great. Doing an amazing job. We have all the floor managers and, and the rest of the APA staff here making sure the tournament runs smoothly. Chance for Chris to pull ahead in points. <clears throat> Again, the nine ball when pocketed worth two points. Mm. 
Well, now a chance for Jacob Ritter to pick up two more points and extend his points lead. Nice shot there by Jacob. Pockets that nine in the corner. Picks up two more points, and he will have the break in this next rack. Good look at Pool Dog Arena. Full house for this last match. Hard to believe, Ava. Yeah. Yep. I'm always excited to go home, but it's always kind of sad. Come down on the final day and... Yeah. See everything all closed up. and It's been a really, really great event this year. I mean, it's amazing how with all these teams it runs as smoothly as it does. Over 2,500 teams. <laughs> That's something, 2, isn't it? 2,500 teams. Over 15,000 registered participants in those of those 2,500 teams. I know, and constant action in the uh, Mini Mania room as well. A lot of players that were in the event, signed up, played over and over, and then you had some that are were not in the event. You can still come if you're a, a spouse or a friend that wants to come out and support teams that make it out here. You still have action in that room. Jacob with the break. Dry break brings Chris back to the table. Mm. Just kind of jabbed at that a little bit. Didn't really settle in at a dress. And just kind of... Got real quick on that one, just like he did towards the end of the last rack. Mm. This is not an easy make here, considering it's on the left side with the side pocket and you're just going to have to hit a sliver of it or just go ahead and make <laughs> the make the five that'll work and, and get position shot. on the yeah. one and you know you learn something every day and we're going to see a timeout here Timeout by Ray Rangale of Gambler One. Again, they're from Gainesville, Florida. Their opponents control your rack nine. They're out of Atlanta, Georgia. Does not pocket the one. No, but didn't really leave much. Even if Jacob makes this, getting, you know, there's no shot on that, too. Yeah, sometimes that's nine the ball. best move right there. <laughs> he just made the eight, at least, still at the table. Nearly pocketed that nine on the side. And I tell you what, if he manages to make this, the cue ball's heading right for the two five, I would think. Oh, no, he, oh, he so put some low left on that, <clears> and that, I thought he was going to just cut it in with center and go up and down the table. So the one will be a dead ball in this rack. No point awarded. Chris will have ball in hand. Chris is a skill level four. Needs 31 points to Jacob's 38. 
And with that differential, he does have a slight lead in the match currently. Still some nerves going on here until sure. the whole team settles in <clears throat> and the players settle in a little bit. Well, that didn't work out. I know that those of you who have played in the Pool Dog Championship arena before, you know. But, I, know. Um, yeah. I know. I see it. It's a tougher yeah. environment, right? No, it's a lot of eyeballs no on. Yeah. And if you've ever watched the matches before, you know there's some keyboard cowboys out there saying, <laughs> you know, they're. They rank too high, too low. They, it's, you know, well, it's always one ball. or the other. I can't believe it. It's but, always one so or the then, other. when you get here and you have been on there or <laughs> been one of the keyboard, now you really feel the pressure because. Ooh, I'd like to see a keyboard cowboy playing in pool dog arena. Would we know? <laughs> yeah. we, we don't, don't know if we it's need happened, to make a but... list. We need, we're going to make a list. We're going to have a database of keyboard <laughs> cowboys. <laughs> Okay, referee is going to be looking for the double hit here. He's jacking up on the three. That was a good hit. But is that going to get in front of the side? I'm sure it is. Wrong angle to get to the four, though. So, But might as well just grab this point while you can. It's not all about running out. It's making the best of what the table gives you. And the referee gets real close here, considering I'm not sure if these balls are frozen or not. He's going to go ahead and try to send this three ball down, possibly make the four. Not quite. Just hung up. Uh, no, trust me. No, nobody... <laughs> You see somebody, the same comment I saw? Yeah, somebody said that the team you was... You qualified a team because you didn't like them. Uh, da, 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 that makes we, zero we, sense. We would do no such yeah. thing. We have had have no problem with having back-to-back -back winners again, but we input, just so you guys know, we input after each round, just like we do during league, like we do in tri-cups or playoffs or world qualifiers. And um, if the skill, if skill levels go up, APA... Too much movement. It yeah. doesn't matter who you are. No, it doesn't matter. But I can assure you it doesn't benefit us in any way to have to disqualify we a team like other it, than trust to me. No. make sure we maintain the you know the fairness of the event. So unfortunately sometimes that happens. Yeah. Sure they have, they're allowed to try for a repeat, absolutely. But not if there's major skill level movement, so And again, everybody that has played in any kind of a, one of our events out here or locally, you know you have a chance to certify. There's a form. Everybody certifies skill levels. So if you know that you've been practicing hard to come out here and you Watch realize you that you, ooh, you probably don't really play like a four anymore. You play more like a five, then yes, you probably should certify that player on your team a little bit higher, but <clears throat> if you don't do that and players go up, several players go up, then yeah. And that's obviously to protect the integrity sure. of the event. Well, there's 581 other teams that are, I'm sure, would not be pleased to know that we didn't do our due diligence when a team yeah. has excessive skill level movement. It yep. doesn't matter who they are or when in the tournament. If it's determined that they've had too much movement, sometimes disqualifications happen. So we're not going to harp on that for no. the entire match. Just though, had to so get through that. So now that we've addressed it, I think all right, there you go. We'll focus back <laughs> in on the match. Close eighteen to thirteen. About 
halfway through, almost, through the match, if they keep this pace up and keeping it close. We're almost right on pace also, as far as the skill level points go. One needs 20, the other needs 18. Happy to see a full house here in Pool Dog Arena, Ava. You never know on the last day. That's true, Folks isn't start it? Start heading yeah. home and of course with it being streamed, right? They able to watch it without actually being here. Yeah, but there's something about watching it live too. For sure. This is a fantastic arena. I thought it was kinda cool they were throwing out some T shirts sometimes in between the matches and stuff. That was <laughs> no, kind of fun. Cool. Got everybody excited. Another break here for Jacob Ritter. Another dry break for him. He's had a few. Yeah. Well, one ball is definitely makeable here. And even though it's pretty much straight in, you can create an angle. Well, not quite straight in, but shooting the one ball off the four is going to create the angle that he needs to come over the other side of the table for the two. Possibly the two nine. I don't think the two passes by the nine. He might be able to make the one and the four here, depending on his speed of his shot. If he goes into the four. Oh, all right. Let's see what we're going to do here. Banking it. Billiard. Safety. A few different options. You see the news today on the Moscone Cup, Ava? They announced the captains for I this know. year's Moscone Cup. Our good friend Double J, Jeremy Jones, back to Captain Team USA for the fourth consecutive year. And Ralph Eckert out of Germany. You know, you probably know Ralph. I've known Ralph since I was probably about, I don't know, 18 years old. Yeah. He's a good guy, Real, really studies the game. He, he's a little bit like Europe's answer to Mark Wilson, you know, very... Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, he... Um, he lives, breeds, and bleeds pool. And I think and a lot of the players have super, super respect for him. So I think he's going to be doing a good job. Oh, almost not quite the rail. That means ball in hand for Chris. And he could pick up a quick two points and have the break here. He'd have to work hard at missing this one, but you never know. Still got to bear down. Hit a straight stroke. And there it is. There's that miss real quick on it. Anytime you take an easy shot for granted at all, you're you're going to have big problems in this game. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how many balls you've made in your life. I think that's the hardest thing about pool is that you have to keep that concentration all the way through. Jacob now needs 18 more points as well, so we are essentially deadlocked in this match. Both players needing 18 more points. Mm, seven ball. No. <clears throat> okay. Chris got a good opportunity to make the four. He just needs to make a couple of balls to shake off some of his nerves here. Not easy to get some kind of shot on the five. Just make sure to try to grab a point here. There you go. Oh, no. Follows it in with the cue ball, so another dead ball.
A little bit of a sloppy start here at the beginning of this match. Yeah. Again, the nerves and going up first, too, in this arena. Feel the pressure. You've never played in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are watching. And then the Masters, we found out, is just, just on the live portion from YouTube, I believe we had over 10,000 viewers. So it's not just the people in this room. And it's like I said before, you know, in the other earlier part of this tournament, you have your friends sitting right there and your teammates and maybe if a spouse or two that came along. But other than that, nobody cares about what you're doing. They're minding their own business. But now you have all the eyes on you here in this packed room. Your heart's pounding. And you know how close you are to bring your team to that $20,000 first prize and the champion trophy to take home. Right, it looks like Chris is going to get one more shot at this. Jacob's ahead 24 to 14. Big couple of points here for Chris. There you go. He hit that with authority, didn't he? He says, you're going down. I don't care what I got to do. And again, seven points is the difference between these two as far as the race. And eight points is the difference in the score right now. So, so far, it's pretty much... They're moving along right according to skill levels. We'll see if that continues and brings this match all the way down to close to Hill Hill. Good look at the championship trophy there. Looming here in Pool Dog Arena. Reminder to these players, what's at stake? Mm-hmm. That and the $20,000 first place prize. Two, Two ball, ball goes down. And that's going to be about it. More than likely, unless he can figure out a way to kick this one ball in. Time out here for Gambler 1. It looks like he's going to have to put some left spin on this. Hit right before the side pocket, right about there, just like that. Go down into the end rail and back out again, I believe, unless he can go straight into it. It's always the easiest to find. Oh, not enough spin on there. Ball in hand here to Jacob. I was kind of looking back over our notes of the week, Ava, and the, all the champions that we've crowned. Started with the Jack and Jill doubles championship team from Richmond, Virginia. Called Highly Unlikely winning that event. Ladies champions were from Ontario. The team of Breaking Bad. Our eight ball world champions we mentioned were from Florida. Party animals. Team captains, it was El Capitan of Chicago winning that event. Masters Championship, we had a team from Dallas, Texas. A team of To the Moon winning that event.
And the only one still to be decided here at the World Pool Championships, the nine ball. Very close match, this first match. Both players have missed a few shots here and there. It's mm, a little twisties in the stroke again. That's the most aggravating thing. You know, I've been there several times where you're playing and all of a sudden there's a little something off in your stroke and you spend the rest of the match trying to figure out what it is. And the more you try to figure it out, the worse it gets. I, it's, it's something everybody goes through at times. Jacob Ritter now 12 points away from victory. Make that 11. He wants that to slow down. Six points still on the table here. That's oh. a good shot there, Jacob. And are you going to get a bonus ball? You sure you are. Go. Two more points on top of that. That'll take him to 29. Three dead balls on the table. Takes him to 30. Okay. So he is now eight points away, Ava. He's got the match right here on this table. Ten points available. He needs eight of them. And he will have the break after pocketing the nine. Vendors have all packed up. They've been here this whole time mm -hmm. and stayed busy. It was hard to even get in anywhere because it was just, you know, you didn't want anything in pool. Our vendors had it for you. I don't care I what it was from, you know, pocket markers to cue sticks to cases and gloves and handmade, beautiful handmade stuff. Um, I waited too long. I went by a vendor booth yesterday to get a hat and they were all out of my they size. They were gone, yeah. <laughs> I waited too long. I've done that before. But yeah, they're all packing up. All the big tournament rooms closed down. Just Pool Dog Arena remains open now. But a full house today. Jacob Ritter with the break here. Good solid break there. Best break of the match for him. Yeah, you bet. Three balls made on the break. No wow. shot on the two, but... It puts him five yeah. away now from victory. Manages to get to the two ball. Mm, well, he picked a good time to have his best break of the match. You bet. Advantage Georgia right now, I would say. I would agree. But still quite a bit of pool here, more than, more than likely, at least potentially. Well, and the thing to keep in mind with the nine ball format, Ava, is even if Chris can't win this match, the more points he gets, the better the Absolutely. split uh, for the team points. So, uh, No rail, I don't believe. If you're wondering how a particular team did here, the... APA World Pool Championships, you can go to compusport.us. Has all the brackets there. You can see how teams finished, where they finished. Another point there for Jacob. Four points away from victory. Mm, just overcut it a little bit. Well, I got a little fortunate again here. And it's close. I know that, that three ball is awfully close to the rail. Not sure this bank on the nine ball is even available due to the double kiss. If it was just a hair off the more off the rail, 
He could shoot the bank shot here on the nine, but I'm not sure he can avoid it. Maybe super thin hit and play a billiard. Hit it on the left side. Very, very thin. No, is that three going to get there? No, it did not. So... Nice, nice shot, shot there. Three points away for Jacob Ritter. Oh, oh. he pockets the four, but he scratches in the side pocket. So he is three points away. Now for Chris, Ava, he'd really like to get at least 19 points on the board which would put him, again, assuming Chris can finish out three more points, would put us at a 15-5 split if he can at least pick up two more balls. And with ball in hand, very possible. Can make sure he doesn't graze this seven ball here on the way out, unless he's going to stop it and shoot the seven in the same pocket. No, 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 no. All right. Three points needed, four still on the table. Chance for Jacob Ritter to finish out this match. And if he does, as it stands, we would see this as a 16-4 split terms of team points. Well, that should help out for Chris a little yes. bit. He's got a shot at this five. Just really bear down here. Stay down. Don't move an inch and just don't move until the ball is in the pocket. And he did. He stayed down on that. He froze. 18 points now for Chris. Again, it's a big deal if he can get to 19. And then the next key number for him would be 22. We're going to have another timeout here by Ray Rangale. Talk things over with Chris. I've never seen somebody give faster, consistently faster timeouts yeah. than Ray. It's kind of refreshing to yeah, see. Most right. people will milk that one Still minute. Still a lot of sand in that timer. Drop. Yeah. Still a lot of sand in that little timer there. Does not get no. that 19th point yet. Chris stra 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 struggling, not straggling, he's struggling a little bit here in this match. Let's see if Jacob's going to play a safe here in the left side of the seven. Just watch out for the scratch. Players having a discussion with the referee here.
No, oh, watch out, cue ball. And well, this could be two, all she wrote here. Two balls, three points. That's all he needs. He can run out this rack. Ava Jacob Ritter will put his team up 16-4. Going to take a timeout, talk this over real quickly. And that's the one minute hourglass there, just to kind of make sure to remind the coach. You can take a peek and see how much time he has left in case he decides to change his mind and come up with a different idea. Do I have time? This one's pretty much set self explanatory. It was just about the coach trying to say this is would be your best posi position opportunity besides making the ball. Just going to make sure we put some high on this, not pinch it, get more center. Again, Jacob's a skill level five, so I don't think that he should have a problem following this up, and, and he did not. This is for the win here. Final two points needed for Jacob Ritter in the team of Control Your Rack 9. Pockets the nine, and he is victorious in this first match. Players shake hands. Nice show of sportsmanship. But if my math's correct, Ava, that puts us at 16-4 in favor of Control Your Rack. Yep, we're going to take just a couple of moments to get things reset, players to put up, or teams to put up their next players, and we'll be right back here at Bulldog Arena. Hey, listen, I know that you don't play pool, but my league team is looking for someone tonight who's never played, so you're coming with. Great, I'll see you there. Hi, guys. Hey, hey. Welcome. hey how you doing? Welcome. Welcome back. I can't believe it. You did it. We're going to Vegas. Vegas, baby. Every loss is a, a very valuable lesson that I have taken and um, utilized from my mistakes to make a better person and a better player of myself and others. I want to make a shout out to Leo, Jose. Without these guys, man, we, we all did it as a team, you know. 
Jose, holy smokes, it's I feel bad for him. In here, folks. I think so. Loud. Another opportunity for Jose Salas to finish this match off for the World Championship. And there it is. There you go, folks. The Fantastic. Scorpion, Joliet, Illinois. They are the 2020-2021 APA World 8-Ball Champions. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, God. Thanks, God. Thank you, thank APA. You so and thank, thanks to all my friends, my family, mis amigos, mi familia. And we our were friends. on a mission together as a team, and we became a family. Be consistent, practice, and always, always listen to the master players, the better shooters. They will guide you and they will lead you. My husband has led me, and I have led him and taught him things. Also I want to say right now, because my kids are watching, Junior Daniel, we did it, baby. Number one, baby, long shots, we did it. Daniel, look at daddy's trophy. <laughs> All right, back here at Pool Dog Arena, ready to go with the second match here in the Nine Ball World Championship. We have Ray Rangale, skill level nine for the Gambler One team out of Gainesville, Florida. His opponent, Christy Lastinger, skill level three. For the team of Control Your Rack 9 out of Atlanta. Ray's going to need 75 points. Christy, being a skill level 3, will only need 25 points. Strong break there by Ray. And the 3. These are all always interesting matchups. There's a lot of pressure on your... Nine, <clears throat> nines in this situation, mm -hmm. going to 75 points. Really got to make sure there's no scratches on the break. That you don't snooker yourself, make unforced errors, because 25 points, I mean, though Christie's a skill level three, that can go real quick. So if you're, if you're a nine, you better, you better play like a nine. All right, she could actually pocket if she hits it firm enough. There's a way to just kind of kick at this, and that cue ball could easily come over here and make the six ball. Looks like she <clears throat> she's coming a little too short, yeah. Ball in hand to Ray. Christie's team, control your rack nine. Leads 16 to 4 in terms of team match points. Ray with the 1 6 combination in the corner. Clear path down to the two ball here. Does not want to end up straight in. That eight ball helped the that. Eight to boot. Yep. Very comfortable start for Ray. Again, Ray is the ooh, Ray is the captain of Team Gambler One, and it looks like he plays about the same pace that he gives timeouts. Huh? He <laughs> <laughs> kind of steps up and just shoots him up. Amazing what happens when you have some extra confidence too in your game. And. Uh, he does need to not only pick up some points, but to try to uh, even things out a little bit after the 16-4 mm -hmm. loss that they had in the first match. Whoops. Yeah, he's looking for a big win here. Shooting on the nine here. Well, it's a good start for Ray, 10-0. Kind of did what he was expected, or yeah. we ex expected him to do, especially with ball in hand there. And he will have the break.
Ray certainly looked ready for the bright lights and the crowd and all the things that go with playing here at Pool Dog Arena in that first rack. Yeah, he looks very confident and comfortable out here. It's always tricky doing for us to do commentary because we don't know players. You know, players at home, they know, well, he, he never gets nervous or you know, well, he usually does tend to get nervous under pressure. I mean, there, there's no way to know. It's such a, you're so spoiled doing commentary. We've been doing it for years for for pros and you kind of know all the players, the usual suspects and what their style of game is and how you handle pressure and everything else. So it's always a treat to kind of see these new players and see how they handle handle this situation. Solid break the again one there. And the eight. And he got a shot on the two. Three ball side pocket there. This combo is available. So things are open. It's just by cue ball control and not making any air. Oh, unforced errors there. We'll see if he could get down there. He's he's got it looks like he's got the perfect angle to get come over for No, he went into the six. And he's not gonna take any chances and going for a bank or anything like that. He's gonna make sure that if Christy does get to the table She's not going to have anything easy to shoot at. So Christy just has to be patient, wait for her chance. It's important that she at least makes contact with this five ball. Maybe get lucky, make it, get a defense. But obviously making contact here is a must for her. Christy and her teammates are from Atlanta. Ray and his teammates are from Gainesville, Florida. Oh, that's, I was going to say, that's going to have to be a timeout. He's going to want her to go to the end rail here instead of all the way up top. Much easier, obviously, to make a hit this way than going all the way down. You always want to make sure you hit and hit the one that is the closest. Hit the cushion that is the closest to the ball. That's going to be your easiest way to judge it. Over a little bit more, probably. There you go. That looks a little better. And look at this defense on Watch this. That cue ball, ball goes. <laughs> that All was right. pretty sweet Nicely right there. Done. Well timed coaching there. Kudos to Clayton Fisher with a well used timeout. Let's see what Ray counters with here. Contact Ray made says, no and... problem. Let's see what you got now. <laughs> yeah. No timeouts now. I have to do it again. Kick at this five ball. Got to watch the scratch here when you're coming from behind. If she hits here, it's so easy for the ball to scratch in the corner pocket. You need to make sure you hit this part of the five in order to... Avoid a chance at that. How about that? Nicely done <laughs> by Christy. The first point on the board, much to the delight of her teammates and the crowd here. Crowd at Pool gave Dog her Arena. some love on that one, yeah. 
Well, who doesn't love an underdog in a race <laughs> like this? Come on. A three versus a nine. Universal, I believe, with you. Especially if you Two don't points. have a horse in the race. Just going to grab the bridge. Ray back to the table now. That didn't work out badly at all for Christy. Oh boy, a little too firm there. Well, it still didn't leave much of a shot. Tough angle into the side pocket for sure. See if she decides to do that, or she could just hit straight on it and try to bank it in the corner. A surprising amount of different options here. None of them were easy, but shoot a billiard down on the nine. I don't know if she's going to see that necessarily as a skill level three, but we'll see what she comes up with. I think she's going to go on the side. No. Nope. Ray Rain Gale back to the table now for Gambler One. Pockets at seven in the corner. Got to believe he'll pick up two more points with the nine in the same corner. No problem for Ray. Takes an 18 to 2 lead. And we'll once again have a break, have the break in the third rack. If you're just joining us, you're watching coverage of the APA World Nine Ball Championship, the final title to be decided here in Las Vegas after 10 days of competition, over 2,500 teams, 582 of them in this nine ball event. We are down to the final two. be a tiger shake the other hand in respect uh, probably the three because that's my favorite number very consistent svb baby i'm cool time <laughs> ray at the table with the break here strong break got the one ball he really has the break working the here. Seven ball. Yep. And a good chance to run out here. Key shot coming right up. Two to the three. Just make this and draw it out. Or you could follow it. Take more of an angle on the three. Oh, he forgot to hit it. Need a little bit more oomph on that three on that shot right there. But again, as long as he stays in control of the table as a skill level nine, he should be able to just make it difficult for Christy to get a shot. He's going for the three in this one rail. No, he's playing defense. Okay. Patience, patience, patience. And again, I guess Ray needed with that 16 4 deficit in the first match. I think Ray put himself up feeling confident that he could be in control and make some noise, not knowing if they were going to put the other team was going to put their nine. Clayton Fisher on him. Instead, they decided to throw off and save Clayton for later. 
They both teams have solid rosters where they have a lot of different options what to play. Control your rack out of Atlanta, Georgia, more so than Gambler One, but so much has to do as far as put ups. I'm always impressed with the captains when they plan the the match, depending on if you put up first or not, and then how who to play what. I got that double kiss there. That didn't end up very nice. And again, another chance here for Ray to extend his lead by seven more points. Table is wide open. This should not be a problem for a player of Ray's ability. Do we know which team put up here first? I mean, I'm guessing they put Ray I up first. I believe it was uh, Control Your Rack that put up first in the, oh, really? in the, whole, in the whole match. Oh, okay. So, so that means Ray put, one, up, Ray yeah, put himself exactly. up. Yeah, I'm So they countered sure. with the three. Mm -hmm. And he's doing what he has to do, which is just play tight. A lot of times I see... Skill level nines, eight or nine, they play a two or a three or a one, and they just take for granted they're just going to win, and they don't bear down enough and figure, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lose to a three, and uh, they do. <laughs> so, if, like I said, if you're going to you're gonna be a nine, you better play like a nine, especially if you're playing a lower skill level player, because the more chances you give them at the table, the more noise they're going to make, so... Respect the table, play it the way it's supposed to be played. I don't care if you're playing a skill level 2 or, or a skill level 9. It's you against the table. Play smart. Six in the side for Ray. Eight in the side, two points left on the table, and he picks those up as well, extends his lead to 28 to 2. Again, though, Ray needs 75 points to Christie's 25, and he will once again have the break. There's a good shot of our pool dog arena where we hold all our championship matches, and that was a quick shot of the trophy. There it's it is It's gorgeous. Again. Yeah, I love it. Oh, and then there's the 20 grand that goes with it, too, so forgot about that part. I'm sure they did not forget about the 20 grand part. <laughs> no. Yeah, but how many times have we pointed that out, that money gets spent and yeah. that's gone, that trophy's forever, so. Oh, solid break. Let go of the cue ball just a little bit, but check out the one came. No, I don't know. You may be able to curve this in. I'm not sure. He, I'm, he can't make it directly, I don't think. If he can avoid scratching in the side by cutting it, then obviously that'll work, but... It's tough to tell if he can or not. Pocketed the four and the five on the break. All right. If he hit this firm enough, that's a good defensive shot. Not quite. Let's see if Christy can slice this one ball in. She still needs 23 points. Ray needs 45. Oh, nice shot. And check out the little help from the six, and she got perfect on the two ball. Another point there for Christy. Christy. 
And it's like we have mentioned before also, it's not just about the W in these matches. It's about how many points you can grab in Absolutely. each match because it's the team that wins or loses, not the individual player. You can have a couple of losses and still win it, but just grab as many points for your team as you possibly can. Every ball can turn out to be very valuable. Just overcut it by a hair. And unfortunately, we usually get asked about this. I wish you guys could hear the energy in this room. Crowd has really been animated today, but mm -hmm. you can't really hear it on the on the feed because we can't control the music that's up to the Westgate and we can't really control the music in the room and uh, to avoid having Facebook kind of knock us off Y5. We, we don't really have a choice but to have it kind of no mics in the actual room, so. Heat in the side for Ray. Well, we could turn the music off, but well, that, when it's so quiet, <laughs> yeah. it makes it a little weird. And it's really hard for the players, too, that are not used to this pressure if, if it's like you can hear a pin drop. Yeah. Well, every conversation is heard. Yeah. Every, you know anything that gets dropped, buzzing phone. Mm-hmm. Nice to have a little background noise. A lion. Uh, get some rest. It'll be a nine ball, because that's what wins the game. Uh, relentless. Uh, Jeremy Jones, nine ball, definitely. Vegas trip. The rack is ready. The cue ball gets a quick cleaning. Ray Rangel with his fourth break of the match, I believe. Mm hmm. Oh, fifth. We see how he's been very good at controlling his cue ball. And this would be the fifth rack. One and ball nearly got the knot. Oh, watch out, watch oh, out. He's got to change. Oh. Oh, he's going to make it here, I would have to venture to guess. The two balls on the break. <laughs> and a 2 9 combo quickly finishes out that rack with two more points. The rest of the balls on the table will be dead balls. And the referee right back to work. Rack them up. I know you mentioned this earlier, but it's probably worth mentioning again how much we appreciate all the referees that came out to this year's event. Yeah. Such an important part of making this event as successful as it is. They are all APA members that volunteer their time to come out. Some long hours, a lot of pressure, but they do a great job. See a, the score a thankless there. job, yeah. but still, I mean, you got to have a little well, bit of thick skin to be able them. to be a ref. Absolutely, we're thanking them, but yeah. I think a lot of times the players forget to, but I do see a lot of, uh, at the end of the match, people walk by the, the captains and just say, hey, thanks for being here and shake their hands. I mean, yeah. uh, the referees, so I think that's pretty cool. Ray is at 36 points from victory. Christy needs 20. Ray's team trailing in overall team points, 16 to 4. So he's looking for a big win here. And with that break, he's got a good shot at oh, it. He really it going, hits him solid. Two balls on every break, it's, I think. Lead up to, and that puts him at 41.
I'm sure he was hoping for a 20-0 here once he saw he was up against. That's gone because Christie has reached five. If it stays where it is now and he <clears throat> wins from here, that would be a 19-1. to one. And that would put his team in lead. So since the first match was 16-4 to four in favor of Control Your Rack, He grabs the bridge there under the table. If he can get some draw on this, he can just draw straight up and play the three in the same pocket. Nine balls in the way a little bit, and he should be okay. Perfect angle for the four. And this could be another rack in the books right here in this match. Mm, did he come up too short there? He sure did. That was the first sign of carelessness a little bit. Can he slice it? That's going to be close. Oh, yeah, no problem. Nice. Yeah, it sure looked like no you only could see a piece Ray. of it. Pockets the seven in the corner. Good position on the eight. And now to the nine ball, the final two points in the rack. And he's got him. Puts him at 48 points. Ken Ray is a skill level nine, which means he's got to get to 75 points before his opponent, Christie, skill level three, gets to 25 points. Well, regardless for him to keep Christie at five here, he's going to have to go into three racks. Two won't do it. So Christie will have two more for sure to get up here. It's not over yet, but I know that Ray has plans for this match, keeping his match not on, his team not only in this match, but taking the lead so Christy is really hoping that maybe something can like a scratch or something can happen or that he doesn't get a shot make an unforced error something for her to get back to the table somebody was asking about the weather we did get a little bit of rain yesterday briefly yesterday morning I'm sorry Thursday morning oh there oh there scratch, scratch. Here's that chance for Christy to rack up a couple of points, at least. And that would put her, where are we at now? Five, six. So if she can get to seven, that would put her in an 18-2 split at worst. So she can pick up a couple of balls here, a couple of points here. Got a ball <clears throat> in hand. I'm expecting the captain to come and talk to her a little bit here, but he's, he's Seems not. content to let her yeah, move forward. This is a good time to take a time out as far as working on what do we do after this two ball. I guess he so liked what he saw. Well, he could come here now because this is one of those where she could get... Yeah, he's going to come out and talk to a her A double now. shot at it. Yeah, here he is. Team Captain Clayton Fisher of Control Your Rack 9. Having a conversation with Christy over what to do next here. A lot of good things can happen here. He just wants to make sure that... Definitely want to make this three ball. If anything else positive happens, he can actually help her aim this. 
for getting, getting out of the way and letting her do her thing here. I overcut it just a hair. We'll see Ray get back to the table again, and he's got a perfect shot at this three ball. Oh, he went rail first there, but that could turn out to be costly. He almost froze up on that nine completely. looking to go to cushions if they're frozen I don't think he's got that angle Oof. see if he can put enough juice on this oh, oh. all right more opportunity for Christy seventh point here is a big deal Pockets the four in the side, leaving herself with a shot on the five. Cannot execute the shot on the five, though. But she does now have seven points, which is significant. At worst, she's looking at an 18-2 split. Next magic number for her would be 10. Mm -hmm. Good speed there to avoid having the six ball go all the way to the side rail. Mm -hmm. This could be trouble. No. It's good other than being jacked up over the nine. Luckily, he doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Just tap this in and eight ball's right there. Eight in the side. And nine. Ball falls for two more points. Ray now with 56 points. Needs 19 more. Christy needs 18 points. It was a pretty big deal, though. Regardless of what happens from here, Christy did get to 7, which would put it at 18-2 instead of 19-1. So mm -hmm. her next goal would be to get to 10. Yep. That would make it a 17-3 split. Yeah, a lot of folks are saying, <clears throat> why would you put your 3 up against the 9? But, you know, that's oh, not it, that uncommon. And not in tournament play. Yeah. Normally, normally, league night, not a lot of teams will do that. People want to kind of battle... With somebody about their own skill level, if there is such a thing on the roster. But when it comes to tournament play, you got to play st strategically. And some of it has to do with what numbers you have left. Mm -hmm. Some of it has to do with, you know, the other team has a one on their team. So maybe they think, 
or I'm sorry, a two. They have two twos on their team. Mm -hmm. Gambler one. So I have a feeling that if Clayton Fisher is going to step up, the captain who's a skill level nine for control your rack, then I figured that they're going to just flip flop and, yeah, and, and I mean, do they, that they instead of have a battle. Yeah, they still haven't played him, so he's especially if you if you're up against a nine. If the other person the team puts up a nine and you don't know how strong of a nine is it, so it could be a right. A nine that just became a nine, or it could be what you would call kind of like a super nine. So why go into the unknown? Instead, if you throw off like that, then you can pick up those points later on. So, no oh, Ray with ball in hand now. No plans to raise the handicap limit. <laughs> we get that question every stream, but no plans to do that. We're comfortable with it at 23. You know, when you've got a, a business that's been around for 40 plus years, you know, and it's worked pretty well, it's <laughs> yeah. have a tendency to. Yeah. That's a conversation that is not new, though. I've been saying that for a better mean, the part 20, of 40 of those years. The 23, years. you mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, if you go to 24, then. Somebody says you go oh, to 25, yeah, and then exactly. 25, they said you should go to 26. Right. And, but what I love about this is that we have so many, so many teams, couples that have come in where she's a player and he's never played before or vice versa, or a friend, some co-workers that have never played before that have a league. It's how the league where you can play, and we also have nines who – someday dream about maybe being a pro and everybody in between that thing that's what i love the most is that there's room for everybody on definitely a team. keeps it more inclusive that way yeah right? yeah you have to have some lower skilled players on the roster the only time it's a little tough is if you have a double jeopardy team where they play eight ball and nine ball on the same night but you can actually they don't have to be identical rosters so if it works on the eight ball side and you may have to have a lower player instead of, that's not a big deal. So other than that, we have a lot more lower skill level players than we do your eights and nines. So there's no reason why 23 shouldn't be attainable just because of that. So Nice run out there by Ray. Now with 66 points, he is just nine away. All available in this next rack. And as Ava said, Christy would love to get to 10 points. And Ray would love to keep her from getting to 10 points in this match. Seen some of the stats on this year's event. 800 mini mania events. 800. <laughs> How do you do 800 801. mini? Yeah, 801, 801. mind you. Yeah, that was a strong break there by Ray. Another two balls, right? Eight in the four. And a shot at the one. Shot at the one, no real good way to get to the two ball here. But making this, he can always play that. Oh, he decided for safety. Ooh. That one didn't work. That's a, kind of the first or second mistake that i've seen i guess second or third yeah. little mistake that he's made just hit Hasn't that made many but wanted to hit that seven ball to stop on it behind the six instead christy has a chance here at this one ball picks up another point mm -hmm. she can see the two that's about that's about that Like your comment there, Roy Harris. 
cue ball is going to go into the three ball here. A little firm. Needed it. A little bit smoother touch on that to keep the three ball in the center of the table. You can just tap this though on the left side, I believe. I'll have the cue ball on one side of the seven and the three on the other. Even if he doesn't get totally snookered, the six is right there to stop him from making anything. Is he going rail first? No. Hmm. All right. Chance for Christy again. Don't know how many more that she's going to get in this match, but again, if she can get two, and I think her captain is thinking the same thing, he's going to come out. He knows the significance of her picking up two more points in this match. And again, one of those things that until the five matches are played, you don't know how big that's going to be. One point here and there, team point. Yeah. Huge. Jose Can Salas. Huge. I remember the Scorpions, 2021 eight ball world champions. Mm -hmm. They were a very emotional group. That was our first event, our first uh, world championship, I should say, post COVID. And. One All more right. point for Christy. Magic number <laughs> is 10. Let's see what she comes up with here. If she's going to play, try to play defense or go for it here. She's going to bank this. And the... Well, that didn't work. Ray back to the table, six points away. But he needs five, to go into the next rack. Five on the table. But the way he's breaking them, if he runs out here, I have sneaking suspicion that he's going to make a ball on the break. What do you think? <laughs> I think the odds are very good. Yes. I would venture to say he might make two. I think the only hope that Christie would have then is that white ball finds a pocket. But other than that, Ray's looking pretty good right now. Well, Ray's doing what, what your nine is supposed Absolutely, to do, Absolutely, right? no and, question. And uh, Christie's no played question. a good match, too. Again, she's she was kind of the, the David versus Goliath situation here, so... So far, Goliath is doing his yeah. thing. Christie's doing what she can. Yeah. But he is showing due respect to Christy and not taking anything for granted, playing defense when he's supposed to instead of just going, well, she's not going to make, you know, there's a lot of those nines out there that don't show your threes enough respect, but that's not the case with Ray. And it's so showing on the score. As it stands, if Ray gets a ball here on the break. We're looking at an 18-2 split which would put Gambler 1 ahead slightly in the overall team race. And there it is. Two and on the one break. one more to boot. Two on the break. <laughs> Ray Rangale. The big victory for Gambler 1. 18-2 split there, so they take a small lead. And while we figure out which players will be put up next, we're going to take a quick break here at Pool Dog Arena. We'll be back in just a few moments with continuing coverage of the APA World Pool Championships.
Jonathan Neiman at the table, or as some have affectionately referred to him, the mullet man. And he did tell me that he's going to cut it all off if he wins today. Really? So, oh, yeah. And he's got it. Jonathan Neiman, Wilmington, North Carolina, your eight ball classic champion in the red tier, folks. How's my hair looking? Your hair is looking good. In fact, uh, I believe Ava and Jason were talking about it, that if you won, you were going to cut it. Uh, I did say that. I did say that. <laughs> it's worth it. It's so worth it. <laughs> And we are back here at Pool Dog Arena, third match of the Nine Ball World Championship. At the table is Laura Raingale, skill level five, racing to 38 points. Her opponent, who is on her way to the table, is... Brianna Barrett, skill level three. She needs 25 points. Brianna is part of the Control Your Rack 9 team out of Atlanta. No major... Harm down there. The one ball is not makeable in the corner because of the eight. And that would be a real seriously thin cut into the side. We'll see if it's makeable and if Laura's up to the task here. The good thing about that, if you make it, it would be automatic position pretty much. And quick timeout here by Ray. And by quick timeout, <laughs> with Ray, you mean, you, you mean Generally, it. Generally, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't... Uh... He doesn't like to save his timeouts. There you go. Off he goes. In and out. And we're off and running. He wanted to just tap that one ball to the rail. Get a little bit too firm, but kind of worked out anyway. The feeling that Brianna's going to need the bridge here. Where the cue ball is and where the one is. Just as you predicted, Ava, she grabs the bridge. Overall match score is 22 to 18 in favor of Gambler 1. As Brianna scratches there, ball in hand to her opponent, Laura Raingale. Team score comes up every once in a while, there certain angles. There you have it. 22-18, Fabriel Gambler won. Ray did win that last match 18-2. First match went in favor of Control Your Rack 9. That was a 16-4 split. Laura pockets the 1. Good shot there. Good position. A little bit of an angle to be able to come down for... Three in the corner. Oh, she hit it from... There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Again, Laura, skill level five. She ups up against Brianna Barrett, skill level three. Mm, she tried to slice that. Came in from the other side instead and see what Brianna can do with this three ball. Looks like it's makeable off the five from the angle we have here. She can go ahead and make try to make it in the corner also, of course. No, oh, she saw it. Uh-oh, could be some nine ball action here unless she goes ahead and goes for the four... Four ball would be a really, really 
tough cut. And I have a feeling they're ref- out here. Yeah, they're gonna call timeout. I was looking ahead at the roster here, Ava. Mm. For Gambler One, they have thrown a four, a nine, and now a five. Is it eighteen? Mm-hmm. So in looking at their roster, we're gonna see a pair of twos from here on out if they go. Depending on how long this match goes, at least we'll see. For at least Gambler a, One, correct? Yeah, we'll see at least a one, two, maybe a, a second two. If we go five matches deep, still a lot of options for Control Your Rack Nine. They do have their captain, skill level nine, who is yet to play. They've got two fives, a four, and a three. So, an important match here. Yeah, for, I mean, uh, Gambler One. Because Control Your Rack, they're on, they're only at eleven after three, but then again. This is nine ball, and having two skill level twos left for the end, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Skill level twos raised to 19 points, so... I'm not sure what we're talking about here as we I'm, look at the rosters. A little conversation must be a frozen ball. They may be Can't looking. Let's see. We get that overhead back on the I table. I don't think it's frozen. I think they're just discussing, you know, the warning about double hit. and. Oh, okay. So... That's all I can think of, or unless you moved the ball. We were looking down when all that action was going on. Still has to get that cue out of there quickly. Oh, yeah. okay. He's okay. I was talking about the double hit. Yeah, Thank players, you just so you know, players are allowed to ask about a double hit because there's still a lot of relative beginners, um, players that may be not being playing a lot in the pool room, they may be playing in a bar or at a moose lodge or something and just not familiar with the double hit and you're allowed to ask the referee for what they are actually looking for and what you know kind of that idea what can i do to at least have a chance to Mm -hmm. avoid it the referee obviously cannot show you how to hit a ball but they can tell you what they're looking for and we don't want we want people to win on the table not by not being aware of something or technicality or that type thing so Brianna returns to the table here. The Control Your Rack 9 team out of Atlanta have been playing together for two years. They wanted to make sure they said hello to Rick Sweet, the owner of their local pool room. Looks like they play out of Mr. Q's, too, there in Atlanta. I know that pool room very well. Hosted our U.S. Amateur Championship there for a few years. Oh, yeah, that's right. U.S. Amateur, that's not going to be in a beautiful location in Florida. What is it? in Orlando, Orlando yeah. Right. The Wyndham, Orlando. Really nice facility. Had the chance to visit there last year before we... Signed our contracts with them. I think the players at that event will be very excited when they arrive. Hopefully they're excited before they arrive, but I think they'll be very happy when they see the new facility. Okay, one rail kick here on the seven. Well, ball in hand now to Brianna. And again, 38-25 is a pretty good size since that's seven points. Well, eight. 13 point spread, sorry. So for Brianna to stay with Laura here is a pretty big deal for their team. That was in, turned out nice there. She's nodding. She said, okay, I got that done. I'm just need to make this eight ball, and oh, just hangs there in the pocket. Yeah, she got a little quick on that. If you notice, she just kind of got down, and that's probably her style. But once in a while, you need to take that extra double check when the Q-tip is at address. Make sure all systems are good. Oh no! You know, so many times I see players having a hard time when the ball is hanging in the pocket. 
yes, you are going to make it if you hit it, but it's really important what part of it you hit. If the ball is hanging in the pocket and you want to have the cue ball get out of there, you need to make sure you hit a thin hit because if you hit it full, that high is just going to kind of make the cue ball die off that rail. So huge, huge break for Brianna here. I don't think she thought she was going to get back to the table. And that tied it up. 5-5 five, five after rack one. And Brianna will have the break, so control your rack. Nine certainly has to be happy with how that first rack went for them. Good look at Pool Dog Arena here in Las Vegas. The home of all six championship matches that have been decided over the last week or so. $1.3 million in prize money. 49 states. Four countries represented here. This year's championships. First time we welcomed a team from Singapore. I understand they finished in the top 16. Congratulations to them. Let's see the... Prize money by event, the nine ball event with just under 300,000 in prize money. Again, this match is worth 20,000 to the winner. Yeah, Brianna's hoping to make something on the break here and trying to get the next 20 points to get her team back in the lead again. Miss Jason there. There's ball a the start. Four, four ball. As Jason pointed out, after the first match here, Control Your Rack was ahead 16-4, but then Ray Rangel stepped up to the table and won an 18-2 match, so they're now up 22-18. We'll yeah. see here if Close Rihanna, match, though. Very close you match. You bet. Oh, nice shot there. <laughs> she just she seen a look on her... Relief and a little bit of surprise on her face when that one went in. Okay, that's make a ball two and came all the way around. Natural position, unless she would have just babied that. She knew she was going to come around the table for automatic position there. Another point for Brianna. She is 16 points away from victory. I don't think she's going to be able to do much to get with the six ball, but every ball, every point counts Absolutely. at this point. So Especially when she only what's needs there. 25, yeah, to Laura's 38. Okay, Laura wants that to stop any time now. You can tell the 8-9 is tied up, but for right now, even these two points, the 6 and the 7, are important. She can make that the, as an easy defensive shot on the 8, so just keep your head down here. Good shot. should feed the cue ball if she makes this around three rails towards this eight nine uh oh watch out well okay. no harm down there another point on the board touchy little shot here not to leave it out yeah oh <laughs> it got there just right
Granny asked to make sure the refer told her if it was frozen or not. Going to take a time out here. And while they take a time out, it's a good time to remind you folks that all sessions are starting up around the country in APA leagues. If you're not already a member, you can go to our website, poolplayers.com. You can join, get you in touch with your APA league operator. Get you playing in the league, and who knows, you might find yourself here in Las Vegas with hundreds of eyeballs on you. Well, every every team, every player life. that's here started <laughs> somewhere, so. Oh. <laughs> She wants that to slow down or speed up one or the other 50 yard line. Hmm. Laura now with eight points. I think this would be good for her confidence. Obviously, getting the two more and getting the break. This would be a closing shot, just overcut it by hair and. It's a thin cut, but a makeable nine ball here for Brianna. Again, she needs only 15 points to win this match. There are two on the table here. Mm, nice try. Does not fall. It looks like we're going to have a tied ball game here, Jason. Laura taps that nine in the corner, picks up two more points. And as Ava said, we're tied at 10 points apiece, but with the skill level differential, Laura needs 28 to Brianna's 15. So advantage Brianna at the moment. Laura will have the break in this next rack. Third rack of the third match of the APA Nine Ball World Championship. The sixth and final championship to be decided here. And the APA schedule busy. We have the first weekend of October. Everybody that has qualified for the singles regionals that's gonna be held in the beginning of October. Mm -hmm. Followed by the USAM, as we talked about earlier, Early in November, Orlando, yeah. Florida. You know, there's several interleague or regional events, as yeah. some league operators call them. I know that Southwest Challenge, I think, comes back here in October. And we you know, take a bit of a Southeast break. Southeast Challenge down in... Yeah, those are usually in October, November-ish, and then we have... The holidays coming up, and everybody's gearing up the following that, as far as the Try national break. qualifying <clears> stuff that's going to be the... Spring regionals, your second chance at making our pool players championship out here in May. Yeah, we'll be back before you know it. Might as well not even unpack. Maybe do laundry, maybe. <laughs> there but... was a time I lobbied for us to actually move the company to Las Vegas. Yeah. And now as a mid-40-year-old parent of two, I know how ridiculous of an idea that was. But as a mid twenty year old, yeah, with no children. Let's just live out there. I thought it was a great idea if we would just be here all the time. <laughs> it's funny how your perspective changes. Uh, definitely. Oh, what a nice try that was. Okay, the perfect shot here. Well, the, the best opportunity here would be to hit the left side of the two. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to make it here. I guess it is more makeable than it looks like. The overhead, there you go. Let's see if she can, did she get lucky here? No, I think Brianna can make this too.
two in the corner. <clears throat> now ball died nicely away. off the four there to leave a shot on the three. That didn't hurt any. Three in the side. <laughs> she's just, I, I love how she's getting help from all these balls to get perfect on the next shot. She's going to have to do some work on her own on this one, though, getting on this five. She would have to come all the way across or at least towards the middle of the table to where she could shoot a rail first on this five ball. This is skill level three, though. It's about making those balls when you have it. Run out is just one of those things that if the balls are laying there and you got the natural angle, sure. Going to see a timeout here for control your rack nine. Brianna now 11 points away. This is the 10th match Brianna has played here. This week's tournament. For Laura, this is her 6th match. Good timeout and a little Very bit of luck on top of that. That didn't hurt either. Few things have, smiles after that one. Well, a few things have gone Brianna's way, but it tends to go back and forth, so I'm sure Laura is going to get her share of it. But she did make, you know what, it pays to hit him. It was a good timeout. Ray's going to use a timeout here, talk things over with Laura. Putting an extender on the cue there. I'm going to try for a, I don't know, a three rail kick, I would think. Can she get there with a two rail? No, but she had to hit that more. She did catch a piece of the eight ball. Yeah, so that's going to gonna that be back. replaced. That needs to be replaced where it was. It's going to be ball in hand for Brianna. In there, the foul was not making contact with the object ball. The inadvertent contact with the eight was not the Correct. cause of the foul there. Correct. Just for clarification, as Brianna picks up another point, make that two. Now nine points away. Watch uh -oh. out. Uh-oh. So she pockets the seven in the corner, yeah. but scratches in the opposite corner, which means the seven is not a point awarded. That's a dead ball. Laura will have ball in hand with the eight and nine remaining on the table. If that seven was hit with either draw or follow, she would have been able to avoid that, but the tangent line hitting center ball, that brought her straight into... The scratch when well, it's a big deal for Laura here especially since Brianna is only going to 25 she needs to get something going so these three points and the break it's just what the doctor to order right now for Laura and team gambler one three points there and the break 
Laura's up to 13 points. Here at Pool Dog Arena. Kids around the country heading back to school. Next couple weeks, it's the perfect time to get back to pool. Mm -hmm. Say hi to that. Back to school, back, back to, to pool. pool. Yeah. God, you're so clever. Back to pool. If you're not currently playing in an APA <laughs> league and you, you're tuning in and you have aspirations or dreams about making it here to Pool Dog Arena, you can go to our website, poolplayers.com. You can join today, right now. No better time. And we still have two sessions. You know, one session out of three is down, the summer session, and we have two sessions left for you to try to qualify for the local playoffs and championships to get out here for 2024 in August. Great opportunity to meet some new people, have some fun. Scratch there on the break for Laura. Seven ball dropped. That'll be a dead ball and a chance for Brianna with ball in hand. Ava, she only needs nine points. I don't think she's going to get them all right now. One ball makes it eight points, but we're considering where that two ball is. That's going to be tough to deal with. Ref is kind of coming up here to see if he can give her a pointer, maybe to get on the other side of the table a little bit for the two. <clears throat> Captain, not ref. No, oh, did I say ref? I did, right. didn't I? Coach. I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Coach is where I was going for. Coach, yeah. The coach in this case, Clayton Fisher, who we would expect to see, I would think, at some point in this match. Skill level nine. He's played nine matches in the tournament thus far, but they've got a pretty good mix of skill levels. Couple of fives, a four, another three. I want him to hit this with some speed. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, she got Missed a little lucky there, there again, Missed considering where the one ball ended up. Cue ball does hit a rail. Rihanna can see the one. I'm not sure if she can make it into the side pocket. There's definitely a, a bank. It would be nice if she could cut it into the side for her sake. And maybe get a at least chance to play some kind of a defense on the th two. But again, Brianna is a skill level three, so it's a little bit more difficult to judge what the plan is there. Every player plays to their skill level, obviously, and what they see on the table and what they feel they're capable of. Laura pockets the one in the corner. <laughs> Sorry, Mickey, I didn't mean to confuse you there. I confused myself, too, so. Laura's trying to measure this kick. There's a chance, always a chance of making something happen. You hit it firm. Players are allowed to mark it in an APA, on the, not on the cloth, but on the actual rail, just not on the cushion. Same thing with timeouts. Good hit, and there goes yeah. that five. Almost, oh, wow, almost. nice try. Again, a little bit unfortunate, the fact, well, unfortunate, I should say, for Brianna's sake, Brianna sake coming up, shot at the two ball. Cannot pocket the two. Mm -hmm.
Mm, to try to make that combination, but two ball doesn't want to go in that no, corner. No, it does not. I have to agree with you, Chris. A lot of people don't realize the nerves out here. I don't care if you're skill level one or nine. If you're playing in Masters, if you don't get nervous here. You don't have any. Different levels, different how many, you know, everybody's going to get nervous. The question is how you can kind of handle it and get through it. There it is. Mm. She made that off the five ball. That helped that that was there. Now eight points away. See if she goes for this nut, she's going to shoot it towards the corner. She's got the six ball right there. If she hits rail first, oh, she overcut it too much. Back and forth we go, but every ball will get you that much closer. And Brianna is now at the point where she only needs seven more to get a big win in the third match here for Team Control Your Rack. But not if not if Loris has anything to do with right. it, huh? Another point on the board for Laura. Mm -hmm. She's got a chance here, making you know, going for this bank with the six ball being where it is. If she banks it short. It can go off the six ball if she, I mean, if she banks it long. If it, banking it short, she could make the six ball. I think I would, if I was the coach right now, I'd definitely have her go for it. Time out here. Uh, look, look good. How about that little double kiss helped out? Five, six, bank combo. <laughs> <laughs> double combo. Rail. We're tied at 17 apiece. Again, Laura is going to 38. Brianna to 25. Well, Nicely that, done. Yep, that stop on the nine ball helped too, where she got a shot at this eight ball. If she makes it, she should be safe from a scratch. The only way she might be able, I don't think she can scratch either way, but if she hits it way too thick, she might. Hmm, that could hurt. This could be three points. Three big points, yeah. That would put Brianna on 20, just needing five if she can make these two. Again, these two teams are competing for $20,000 first place prize money. There's one. And two nice more shot for there. Brianna. She is at 25 points away from victory. She will have the break in this next rack. It's a good time to thank all of our friends here at the Westgate Las Vegas. Been another great event. Hard to believe it's been, what, eight years since we came over here to mm -hmm. the Westgate. Their staff taking good care of thousands of pool players over the last 10 days. I know they're always excited when we come to town. kind of fun now because the restaurants and the people kind of go hey you're back again right or yeah. the bartenders too i guess that yeah. might be a not be a good thing <laughs> uh, okay i've got my own favorite bartender my man yeah. Vilio down at the sports book oh okay he is outstanding but there's several of them yeah that there's are. Some good people a lot of great staff here
<laughs> I don't know what match room matches you've been watching, Ariel. I know they've struggled a little bit the, through the last few years, the U.S. players, but... Um, what she say? <laughs> she's saying that it's just she funny. She said one of these players yeah, should be on the yeah. Moscone team? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're playing okay. better. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, we're going to see her if she can tap this in. A little firm. She wanted to get more straight, obviously, on that two ball. Andrew cut that a little bit. Total match score here going into this was 22-18. 22 18. In yeah. favor of Gambler 1. That will change here if Brianna Barrett can pick up five more points before Lara gets 19 more points. Oh, does, nice oh and it does drop. Hung up there for yeah. momentarily and then fell in. Look, for a second she was going to miss the whole ball, but it's about as thin as you would have to hit to make that one. This rack was broken by Brianna. Well, it's going to be a dead ball. Six in, but yeah, that's foul. Ball in hand to Lara. Six ball will be a dead ball in this rack. Good chance for Laura here to rack up some points for her and her team, considering where the three, five, and four are lined up. Laura's not really gotten going in this match she's a skill level five just few things have gone not gone her way and she just really hasn't been able to string anything together she has played only five times in this tournament so far this will be her sixth match so chris i think oh you got boy. your i think you got that backwards control your rack is not at 18 it's gambler one is at 18 with their handicap total. Yeah. So and as we mentioned that earlier, you'll see the next match you'll see a two, and if it goes five, you'll see another two for them. Still some flexibility for Control Your Rack. They have played a five and two threes. So they're at 11. Plenty of room to work if they choose to throw their nine. They have another three on the roster. They have two fives, they have a four, all of which have played some in this tournament. She would really have to slice this thin. You can see how close that is to the rail and how straight on the cue ball is. She hit she it, did there's get no it. foul. And ball goes to a rail. Similar shot here for Brianna, but a bit easier. Cue ball's a little bit closer, a little bit more of an angle, and a five a hair more closely to that corner pocket. So cuts that five in. Catches a little bit of the nine. That helped her from three points away now. Rihanna Barrett from victory. She finishes out this rack. Make that two points. And a sweet situation here if she can avoid the scratch. The two ball, the eight ball is sitting pretty by the side pocket. Nine ball sitting pretty by the corner. Steve said some of y'all are skill level nines at arguing. <laughs> <laughs> skill level nine keyboard cowboy. That's funny. All right. Two Sometimes points. the ball just balls just lay there for you to 
say thank you very much. And that was the case to end this rack right here. Things tend to go Brianna's way, and she took advantage. And back and forth we go. That's going to be a 16-4 split in favor of Control Your Rack. Gambler 1 started out with the lead, 16 to 4. It's now 26 to 34. Twenty six for the gambler one team, thirty four for control your rack nine. Ava's gonna check my math as she wisely always does. No, I'm not. Oh I'm no I'm trusting you now. Okay. I'm just gonna write down what you said and then it'll be your fault All if right. it's wrong. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I don't right. think you've given us a bum score yet then, so you go with it. All right. So gambler one has Two skill level twos left eligible to play, which we knew. We'll see how Control Your Rack 9 wants to move forward here. Waiting on the names. Gambler one, got it. Okay, got it. So we have the names of our next competitors. We have Naomi Stevens, skill level two of Gambler One. Her opponent, Jose Gonzalez, skill level three of Control Your Rack Nine. Naomi wins the lag. She will have the break in the first rack. And this will be a 19 to 25 race. Looking at the options for Control Your Rack, they've now played three threes and a five, which means Clayton Fisher, their nine, would be looming large in the fifth and final match if needed, right? And, and, if, and not necessarily. Do you really no. want to play? I mean, you can, if they have, all, I believe, all that Gambler One can play as now a two. as a two. Do you put them up? I don't know. I think I would put a, a four or five up instead. I'm I guess not sure it depends I would necessarily what the, uh, do that. Yeah, depends how this match goes. I think in terms of point split, but but just because you can play a nine doesn't necessarily sure. you want to. If I had a solid five on my team, nice, good break. Three balls on the break there for Naomi Stevens. That doesn't hurt. She only needs nineteen. The so one, the seven, and the three ball. So three nothing right off the bat there from the break. That doesn't hurt. That's some instant confidence. <laughs> yeah, right. There are two playing in Pool Dog Arena. This is obviously not an easy shot, but if she were to make it, she doesn't have to do anything with the cue. It's a nice stroke there. Two ball in the corner. And now she, all she has to do is make it. Cue ball's feeding it straight down, automatically down for the five. She has to just kind of tap this in. Whoops. Ooh. Well, avoided the scratch. 
after failing to pocket the four in the side. That brings Jose Gonzalez to the table, skill level three. Mm. Not going to work, so just... Going to get a timeout here for the Gambler 1 team. Interesting time again to take a timeout. But right now, I would just say make sure to make this one. And if she goes rail first, obviously she can get down to the 5. But she could also end up scratching... We'll see, as long as she doesn't hit it too firm. Oh, she didn't. Oh, 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 oh nice time. Oh, look timeout. at that. Great she did out. not go around to scratch. She hit exactly where she was asked to, and the coach got exactly what he asked for. As far as position goes, oh. well, she missed that, but got lucky. Well, again, she's a skill level two, so mm -hmm. don't be surprised if she misses some shots. But with three balls on the break and a couple of pocketed balls here, she leads 5 nothing currently. Oh, she's going to get ball in hand again. Yeah, foul there and a scratch to boot, so... Ball in hand to Naomi. Chance for another point. And she only has to get to 19. To Jose's 25. Ooh, five ball falls. <laughs> I think someone actually was upset because the skill level two has a carbon fiber shaft and a glove. Mm -hmm. That just means she invested a few dollars as far as yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned and found this game and loved it. All oh, right. That's the six. If she can make this again, cue ball's going to feed towards that nine for natural position. Whether she tries to get it or not, she's going to get it. Unless Ooh. she scratches. Oh. So she pockets the eight in the side, but scratches <laughs> in the corner, which means that ball will she, not count as a point. Yeah, she sure. kind of jacked up a little bit there, and that brought the cue ball with the... Kind of the stun straight in, the line that went straight into the side pocket. I didn't see that. Opportunity now for Jose to pick up two points in this first rack, which he does, and he will have the break in the second rack. 7-2 split in that first rack. Again, one dead ball on the eight pocketed by Naomi before the scratch. And uh, last day, so as soon as this wraps up today, you guys start tearing everything down. I'm going to huh? tear it down. You're I'm going to have apart. dinner. I'm not even going to lift a You're finger. You're not going to tear it down no. for us? No, I'm good. <laughs> See how it is. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. A lot to be torn down, believe me. All right, Jose with his first break of the match. Solid That's break the... there. One ball nicely and in eight the on the break. side pocket. A little bit more tricky to get on the two ball that's down here, but every point counts at this point. OK, 
Control Your Rack leads 34 to 26 in team match points. Team score right now is Control Your Rack has got 34 and Gambler won 26. Look at there. <laughs> right? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? Four ball goes. Jose says, I'll take it. Yeah. And, it, and it I don't does, blame him. I would take it, At the same time, a little apologies, but you know what? I'm still going to take I'll it. I'll take it. Uh, just barely slid in. Those of you who watched a couple of days ago, everything was kind of hanging up. That would not have gone in because the humidity set in, but we're back to dry Las Vegas again. The air is as dry as it's going to get, so the table is sliding more than normal, which obviously makes the pocket more acceptable, and it changes your rail position play a little bit too. Well, he missed that, but he got nice. the bank instead. That'll work. No position, but... He got the point. We did have some rain a couple days ago, right before the Masters finals mm -hmm. Thursday evening, but that's the only hint of moisture we've had here in Las Vegas over the last 10 days. Time out now for Control Your Rack. Clayton Fisher wants to talk things over with Jose here. Now, this is an important hit. I guess they all are, but with Naomi being tied here, she only needs 19 points, and this could be two, at least two easy ones for her. Need to get this. No, that's the, I think the coach forgot to tell him to hit it with some speed. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hit it softly, like I talked about before, because it's so dry in here, the rails are going to go long so you need to go ahead if you're going to have them show them where to hit it you need to rem remember to hit tell them what speed to hit it with as well naomi with ball in hand now she is 12 points away from victory make that 11. Yeah, she floated the cue ball a little too much there. And gave her a tricky shot on the six. I'm going to have to watch the cue ball from going in the drink here. How about this one? Going to get a little lucky get here? There? Not nope. quite. Almost. But almost. lucky enough not to leave a shot for Jose. So if control your rack is at 34 points, Ava... They need a 16-4 split or better, and they would be your champions after this match, right? And put them at 50. They've won two out of the three. Very good. Yeah. Putting it together. So proud of you. Putting it together after all these years. 16-4 split yes. would put them at that 50, them and at they 50. would have the tiebreaker by having won three of Correct. four matches. Oh, oh, there's that scratch. Pockets the six, but Scratch is in the corner, so that's another dead ball there. It's typical, you know, skill level two, three, that's usually what you see is can pocket some balls, definitely, but, but really being aware of the position and how to avoid where the cue ball is going, which includes avoiding scratches. So Naomi gets to at least 11 points. We go to a fifth match. See what Jose can do here. He needs to just stun the cue ball, put it on a slight angle, and just stun the cue ball with some center, and that's going to drift it straight out this way. There you go. 
Another point for Jose. We are tied 8-8. Eight to eight. Again, though, he needs six more points because of the skill level differential here. He is a 3. Naomi is a 2. And two more points for Jose. He's now at 10. After the second rack, he will have the break in the third. And make sure we thank our sponsors, Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls, our friends at PoolDog.com, and Diamond Tables. More than 350 of them at the Westgate this week. We got them in about every nook and cranny of this <laughs> Even in the Hotel Chinese Casino, restaurant. <laughs> yeah. And that's a popular one. I have, Every time I walk by there, there's it's somebody never been I've empty. never seen it empty. Don't matter what time of the day or morning, or you can be there at 7.30 in the morning or 1 o'clock in the morning, there's going to be people in there packed. I'll be curious after the match if there's still people in there when we leave here. I'm sure there will be. I'm not sure when they're pulling those tables out. No reason to. I mean, you've got yeah. nine ball players here until tomorrow, so. Strong break, but the cue ball goes flying off the table. Another great so opportunity. A dead for ball. Naomi to make the yeah. six, but man, that cue ball went flying. Just Naomi hit down on it a little bit, then when you don't hit center, that's going to make the cue ball pop if you hit down on it on your break shot. Ray's going to take a timeout. We've seen him do this now several times in this match. Mm -hmm. Use Doesn't, it early. He likes to use it right off the bat. He's used it several times at the beginning of a rack. I can't quite see the table from here. Well, there you go. Had the referee standing right in front of us here. All he wanted to make sure was give her a chance to have natural feed into the two. So she has a chance for position on the two. And, there is. well, she can see the two. I'm not sure she can make it. Another point for Naomi. She's up to nine. Again, if she gets to at least 11, we will go to a fifth and final match, no matter the outcome here. Cue ball pulls up there in front of the pocket. Jose back to the table. You know, if you're not familiar with our nine ball scoring, it can be a little little bit of an adjustment to figure yeah. out what's going on when you watch this because you've got the points per ball, you've got the individual match score, and then you've got the team match score. I think the most confusing thing for people is the, if you don't have a score sheet, of, oh, nice, that turned out pretty sweet, it is the team score. Because if you don't have a sheet in front of you, and you can see what happens if a five gets X amount of points or four gets so many points. That I think that's the most confusing part. We are just shy of three hours into this nine ball world championship match. Got started a little after 2 o'clock. Just going to go for two rails here. Oh, oh nice she hit. Oh, got it. Somebody did pay attention in geometry <laughs> in school. Well done. Ray is smiling and applauding over there, a captain. He looked a little bit surprised and at the same time kind of like a proud daddy. Oh, this is nice. This, Jessica says, I'm proud of Naomi. She works at a hospital, full-time nursing student. Just found a love for pool. That's what we That's like to great. hear. Look yeah. There. That's one of the things I do love about APA, Ava, is you find these folks from really all mm -hmm. walks of life, different professions, different backgrounds, obviously different parts of the world. And they all come together with one commonality, and that's the sport of pool. You bet. Oh, did that line it up? Three Looks ball tempting, being right? yeah, three ball being frozen there. If he touches the three ball at all first with a nine ball, 
it's not going to go. It's going to double kiss, possibly make the three ball, but if it avoids. He's going for now, it. Couldn't quite get it now. But Naomi look at this. Can go Naomi's for it. got it now. Again, she needs to get to 11 points at least. Obviously, she'd love to win this match, but 11 puts us at a fifth match, and there it is, Ava. She's got nice the shot. 11 points. Those two that she picks up there, the rest of the balls will be dead balls in that rack. She will have the break. In the fourth rack here, she is eight points away from victory. Jose still needing 15. What an experience for these two players. You've got a two and a three and... Mm -hmm. on the biggest stage you could ever imagine representing your teams and your league area yep. should both be very proud of themselves and they should be proud of themselves too because they really are holding it together yeah I mean, you can look at them they don't look super yeah. nervous they're just doing what what is what they can what's on the table oh oh I'm going to try that again. And that's not going to be a legal rack, so she'll have the break again, re-rack those balls, and Naomi will have another chance at it. Just as we say, they don't look too nervous, but there have been a few nerves there with that break. But She'll yeah. regroup. She's a full-time nursing student. She can handle the pressure, I'm guessing, <laughs> in that yeah. field. If you're just joining us, you're watching coverage of the APA World Nine Ball Championship here at Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. The sixth and final championship to be decided here at this year's event. $20,000 on the line. Naomi Stevens of the Gambler One team from Gainesville, Florida, at the table here with the break. Two mm -hmm. balls on the break. Cue ball almost went with him, but she avoided that. So that's two more points for Naomi. That puts her at 13, six points away. She's had a couple of good breaks. I think she had three balls on her first break to start the match. Yeah. Three on that one, two there. That's You know, five. some tables break great when yeah. you hit them firm. And other times I know on the Pro Tour, you see players kind of back off on the speed, hit them harder, hit them softer from different directions. All tables mm. break differently. Can't pocket the one ball. Jose Gonzalez returns to the table here. Jose needing 15 points to Naomi's six. It's been a closely contested finale here, Ava. Yes. See oh, beautiful the one. shot there. Nice sliced. Position was almost automatic, at least, that it was going to come down to the, the side of the three ball, but still beautiful cut shot. Let's see if he, the same thing should happen here. If he makes the three, mm. no, over, just barely missed it. Another timeout coming. Jose's only. Yeah, has Jose in this uh, that's playing in this match has only played four times so far. Yeah, in this tournament. Match. This and Naomi and Naomi has played nine. Yep, her tenth time playing. There you go with the good math again. Yep. See how I can add one to any number. I know. You give me any number, I'll add one, <laughs> and I'll be right. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> Little math skill I learned back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Naomi cannot cut that three in the Man, corner. That was a tall order. I don't care what your skill level is. That was not an easy shot. If she was trying to make it, and here comes Jose back to the table again. Needs to make something happen. He's down by 
two, but he's down by eight, according to the race. He needs 25 to Naomi's 19. Oops. Well, he got between the six and seven, but I forgot there was a side pocket there. So again, ball in hand for Naomi. This is a time it would have been great to have that timeout left to make sure she put on an angle. She put it on quite a bit of an angle. A lot of times you see skill level one, two, and three put, get ball in hand and put it straight in. She didn't overdo it to try to get all the way down for position, but at least she gave herself a chance to make this six. If she can make the six ball, position should be built in for the seven. So if she can keep her head down and see how still she stays. Now she jacked up. Oh, she Got jumped it. up just a little bit, but it, the pocket accepted it. Naomi, four points away from victory now. And wouldn't you know it, Ava? Four points left on the table. It sure is. And like we said, that was a built-in position for that seven. And you see the angle here. All she has to do is make this seven built-in position again for the eight. It's on the correct side. Oh, oh she quite. just missed it. All right. Opportunity now for Jose. And the Control Your Rack team from Atlanta, Georgia. See if he can come around all the way two rails around. That's perfect if he doesn't hit it too firm. Well, that nice. spin on the cue ball slowed it down just in time. Pockets the eight ball up to 13 points for Jose. Two more points out there for him. If he can make this nine ball, he will be 10 points away to Naomi's four. Yeah, I got a little more angle than he wanted on this nine, but. Oh, mm. yeah. What is he going to leave here? It's a makeable nine in the side. It's a little tougher. It's a bit tougher than the last nine that she um, ball she missed on the side, but. It's it's doable. She just got to make sure that she doesn't put center on this. Oh, we'll see. She may bank it. All right, another chance at the nine ball for Jose. Scott Heron was wondering why comments are getting deleted when we don't believe in free speech. Yes, we do. Just harping on the same thing or being unpleasant, we don't believe in that. No. Or the moderator doesn't anyway. And I don't know that free speech necessarily applies to a somebody's Facebook page <laughs> or channel. All right, let's see. Oh, beautiful. Two Look points. how he stayed down. He nice froze. Job. That's the one thing I would like to suggest to everybody. Work on really staying down, staying still until the shot is completed. We are all tied up at 15 in this match. Jose needs 10 points. Naomi needs four points. And one way or another, Ava, we're going to a fifth and final match to decide this year's nine ball championship Jose is going to want to keep that cue ball on the table this time powerful break but sent it flying off the table in his last uh, opportunity to break 
Let's see what he can do here. Took a little bit off. Pockets the four in the corner. Has a shot at the one, but jacked up over this seven. That doesn't help. It makes the shot so much more difficult, not only because you can't get down low enough to really aim, but you're hitting down. And you can ac accidentally put a little spin on the cue ball, unwanted spin, and that's going to affect the outcome of the shot. I can't pocket the one. Brings Naomi back to the table. Again, she is four points away from victory. Oh, nice shot. Look at that one. Very she nice. kind of stabbed at it, but hit it beautifully. Great shot. Under the pressure. And right on cue, timeout for Naomi. Ray Rangale is going to talk to her a little bit. We've seen this pretty consistently from Ray early in the racks. Likes to come out, talk about things. Now, Naomi's only three points away, Ava, so... Plenty of points on the table and an opportunity for her to pick up another big one here on the two ball. Wants to make sure she can get to the three. Oh. Well, All right. it same shooter. Out. She you would know, have had a shot on the three, but. But that's, you know, skill level one, two, three. Right. Um, that's kind of classic. You They come with this big shot and then miss an easy one after that and then. Miss maybe another easy one and then make some amazing bank shot. I mean, that's that's pretty typical. And another timeout here by Control Your Rack. You see the prize payout for this year's nine ball championship, 20000 for first, 10000 for second. We had two teams tie for third place earlier today each of them taking home five thousand dollars you can see the payouts all the way down through 129th All right, see if he can drift the cue ball down a little bit here for the three. Oh, he, no, he jacked up on it, so as easy as that two looked. If you jack up on it, chances are it's going to affect the shot if you just hit it off center just a little bit. And another opportunity, easy tap in here for this two ball. And if she hit it softly, she even has... A shot on the three. No, nope, mm -hmm. just barely missed it. Got lucky, though. As we're getting Talk closer to a conclusion that. here in this match, it seems that pocketed balls are becoming harder to come by, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Naomi only needs three. We'll say it's nine. I'm not sure where all the... See if he can make it the three railer. I don't know. He I don't think he can get through the traffic there. We'll see. Now and this should be two ball in hand for Naomi. Two points for Naomi for sure. Maybe even three with the with the five ball being where it is, the four is gone. 
she just taps this in. The three should be automatic. There's the two, taking her to 17 points. She makes this three ball. That should, that'll put her on the hill, only needing one. Three ball, Naomi one big point away from victory. Okay. We'll have to wait. Jose Gonzalez, another opportunity. Gonna have to put something together, though. <clears throat> Where is he at to improve the team points here? He is a skill level three. He's right at 16. Now. So right now, it's a, well, there we go. Now it's 14 6 split. If Naomi can pull it out, that would right. be a 14 6. So His okay. next number would be 20. So he would need to get to 20 for it to be a 137 so obviously he can still win the Absolutely. match there's no question we'll just have to see what both players do from here how the luck help. rolls so well, a lucky break there unless he was playing that safety that's very possible also it's kind of hard to tell What was going through his mind is an easy kick shot here. Just barely don't hit the eight, and he she should be able to get a good head on hit on the six. But that's going to come around and leave another excellent opportunity for Jose. I think Jessica Stevens is Naomi's mom tuning in, rooting on her daughter. One of my favorite things about the stream, being able to bring this coverage to the family and friends that can't be here. As Jose pockets the six in the corner. Another point for him. He not, needs just seven. Not an easy shot here on this seven ball. He's queuing low, so that tells me he's going for the bank, Ooh, but... but... He's scratched. Dead ball on the seven, <clears throat> and more importantly, Ava, Naomi yep. Stevens, ball in hand, and an opportunity to win this match right here if she can pocket this eight in the corner. Yep, yep. And the eight ball falls. Naomi Stevens taking that match 19 to 18. And as we said, Ava, that's going to be a 14-6 split. And we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a few moments from here at Pool Dog Arena. some rest it'll be a nine ball because that's what wins the game um, relentless uh, Jeremy Jones nine ball definitely Vegas trip it would be a tiger shake the other hand in respect uh, probably the three because that's my favorite number very consistent SVB baby nine ball cool time and this is really going to help your game tremendously and truly put you to the next skill level. 
Hey guys, I'm Fernando Kohler, also known as Venom. I'm a professional pool trick shot artist, but also a league operator for APA in Las Vegas. There we go. Thank you. Uh, this one is using actually 10 balls. So what exactly is a tangent? There's, in my opinion, three types of bridge. The closed bridge, the open bridge, and the rail bridge. We're gonna start with the closed bridge. Now if you practice this, it's really gonna help you to go from a two to a three. In this episode today, we're gonna cover how to go from a three to a four. Let's get into it. The more you're gonna do it, see, as you can see, I touch sometimes a little bit of it. And eight, right? So you technically have eight zone for 10 balls, so you have a little bit of room to spare. I really hope this was useful, and I cannot wait to see you for another video. Later, everybody. What was your favorite part about this year's Junior Championship? Because I worked so hard for it. Meeting new people. It was all that I've gotten to learn so far. I'm your host, Jason Bowman, and I'm joined by the one and only Florian Venom Kohler. Florian, today we have four championship matches to be decided in this year's junior championships. We're kicking it off with the green tier. Congratulations to Jocelyn. She is your juniors champion in the green tier out of Dallas, Texas. I want to thank everybody for watching me, and I want to thank my mom and my coach. Cue ball holds up. Sebastian Bernal, Lynn Haven, Florida, is your APA junior champion for 2023 in the red tier. I didn't feel any nerves, surprisingly. <laughs> I kept. All right, back here at Pool Dog Arena for the fifth and deciding final match this year's nine ball world championship. Ava, this. <laughs> Grand finale has been a great one, and when our fifth match begins, it's once again a David versus Goliath matchup. We talked about the skill levels and who remained on each roster. We're going to see Danielle Ogden, skill level two for the Gambler team out of Gainesville. She's going against a skill level nine, Clayton Fisher, team captain of Control Your Rack out of Atlanta. And based on the, the reaction to the lag, Ava, that Danielle won, I think we kind of know where the the room is rooting for, for <laughs> yeah. David here versus Goliath. But we'll see. <clears throat> All right, the break there. She gets one ball to drop. The six. It hung there for a second, but then dropped when it's... And because we're tied at 40 points apiece in the team match score... The winner of this match will determine who takes home this title. All right, long straight in one. And it, oh, just tongue. <laughs> nice try, though, Danielle. Hang in there in the pocket. And here's your captain for Team Control Your Rack. This is Clayton Fisher. He's got level nine. He's got his job cut out for him here. Needs to get 75 points. 75 to Danielle's points. 19. Yeah. Seven and a half racks. 
Having that one ball for her would have been helpful. Mm. No problem for Clayton. I thought it was interesting. I wasn't sure if they were going to put up the nine or if they would have. They still had a four or fives to play. The fact that he's got to spot so many and she only needs 19. He cannot afford hardly any unforced errors. Needs to really make something happen. Well, I suppose the good thing for him is that, you know, even if she were to get to, say, 10 points or 12 mm -hmm. points, not really going to matter here. It's who wins this. So as long as he can keep her from getting 19 before he gets 75... But things, little things like this, all of yeah. a sudden, if she can <clears throat> see, she needs to play tighter than that. 19 points happen fairly quickly if you're not careful. Time out here. <clears throat> If you're just tuning in, you're watching coverage of the APA World Nine Ball Championship from Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. Been an outstanding match this afternoon here. This is what we always hope for, isn't it? Very entertaining. All right, we'll see how the coaching. Paid off here, where he said, a little more this way, a little more this way. Mm. Oh, it was a nice try. Ever so close. Well, that's going to bring Clayton back to the table again. This is Clayton's 10th match here at the tournament. Again, he is a skill level 9, which means he's got to get to 75 points before Danielle gets to 19. Now, this table has been real friendly, too, as far as on the break. So if he lets her get to the nine at some point, making the nine, and then she has the break, that could be mm -hmm. four or five points right there. So when they're going to 19, he's got to play real tight and still stay loose and run out when he oh, needs to. Oh, can't do that. Nope. Definitely an unforced error there for Clayton Fisher. See what Danielle can do with this three ball. Watch out. Avoids the scratch in the top mm. corner and not a bad leave. Yes, whoever wins this match will win the championship. You can almost throw the team score out the window since yeah. we're tied at 40. It all comes down to will it be a skill level 2 or a skill level 9? I don't remember us ever having a match decided like this. At with the that end, you're right. I mean, we've had like a couple of 2s playing for the championship. We've had some higher skill right. players. But man, a 2 versus a 9 for $20,000. And this I don't was, know if there's a better uh, description for the old everyone can play, anyone can win no. tagline, right? It's You're seeing oh, it play out. No good. And now ball in hand for Danielle. <clears throat> and this was all really brought on by Ray putting himself up. The, the captain, who's a skill level 9 for Gambler 1, put himself up blind and they control your rack answered with a skill level 3 and now they have kind of the opposite situation but now their captain Clayton is going to have to come with beating his skill level too so it's um Raymond was able to get it get that done against the skill level three another point there for Danielle she now has two points get that score updated here momentarily You brought. You just said that too. I mean, how great is it that 
a skill level two. I'm not saying this is her situation because I don't know her background into the game, but a lot of times it's someone who goes, no, nah, I don't want to play. I can't play. I don't want to play. Uh. And here you are potentially deciding, taking home the win at the national championship. It is just amazing. It's like you wake up and go, <laughs> wait, what happened? <laughs> Do you think she woke up thinking she was going to play a nine for the uh, $20,000? Ah. I'm guessing she wasn't thinking that. And if she was, she probably didn't get that much sleep. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure she definitely didn't think that was going to happen when she first started playing APA. Yeah. Well, it makes for a very entertaining finale here. I don't think we could have asked for a better match to end our last day here in Las Vegas. All right, I'm going to be ball in hand to Clayton as she failed to contact the four ball. Let's see if Clayton can put something together here. He's got to, like I said, play tight as far as not letting her get to the table, but loose when it comes to he needs to create. Oh, let that drift a little, drift a little too much there. Just needs to remember why he's a nine, loosen up and play the game. The game, not play scared. All right, it's a nice shot. I want to remind everybody, too, a lot of people think that a nine should just step up and just run racks and not be nervous because they're so good, and it's not the case. Clayton well, is allowed the, to be just as yeah. nervous. Yeah, especially with the, the unpredictability whole, of the, yeah. the two that he's playing, you know, sometimes. And being the deciding factor here yeah. at the end in the fifth match. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on just because you're a nine doesn't make a difference. I was talking to some of the Masters players, and they were saying I've never been so nervous because the pressure of a team riding on your shoulders and and then you add $20,000 and playing in front of everybody. And on the stream, I don't care who you are, you're going to feel the pressure. Yeah, so Clayton Fisher splits that rack 8-2. And what is a 75-point race for him? He will have the break. Clayton is the team captain of Control Your Rack out of Atlanta, Georgia. Danielle Ogden, skill level two of the Gambler team out of Gainesville, Florida. Each of these teams has won two matches today. And this is the fifth and final. All right, let's see if Clayton got the first rack jitters out of the way. Get a little more comfortable now. Trying to find the sweet spot for the break. That's his first break since Danielle won the lag for the first one. Obviously vital to keep the cue ball on the table whether you make a ball or not. Can't afford to keep getting... Ball in hand for Danielle, needless to say. Watch it. Oh. Didn't come up with anything. Try Again, some tables, you break them firm like that. Nothing goes. Take a little bit. If he's been paying attention, you hit it a little bit softer. We've had. Here comes the timeout. One, two, or even three balls go. No, not yet. Ray jumped out of his chair like he was going to take one, but. Let Danielle shoot on this one before they talk things over. Cannot pocket the one. Nearly gets the eight. He was hoping that eight would go in. I know it would have been a point for her, but he would 
probably have gotten the ball in hand and he had a chance to run the rack. Now instead, he's looking at this tough kick here. I don't even know if he can come around. He can't come around. Definitely can't go one rail. Not sure if he can get below the two ball. Can he go this way and come up here? I don't think so. I think the two ball may be in the way for him to do that. Cam Melson, I love it. Put some humor in there. She said, good Lord, all the amount of skill level. Expert keyboard warriors that are butthurt. It's impressive. Guess y'all are really fun at Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> <laughs> good one. All right. That's going to be ball in hand for Danielle on this one ball. And now here comes Ray. I'm going to take a time out and have a little discussion here with Danielle. His job is to try to see if she can get her to make two points here instead of just the one. Maybe even three with this situation. If she can make this one ball, that's going to drift the cue ball towards the two for position. Another there big goes. point for Danielle. A great shot at the two ball now. My timeout worked. Ooh. Cannot pocket the two there. Clayton back to the table. Buckets the two in the side. I believe that four ball goes, which means he just has to kind of follow this down and play center table position. But the way he's cueing it, maybe he needs to spin around it. Uh, little, hmm. A little surprised why he wanted to be on that side of the four. Maybe it can't be made, so he's playing defense. Yeah, I think that's the case. He's going to try to mm -hmm. bury it behind that five that he had a too firm. Mm. Oh, wow. Too firm. It should good chance for... Danielle to pick up another point here. Good shot there. Another point for Danielle. And this is what's tough. Clayton keeps giving Danielle few too many chances. And if that continues, she is going to make a ball here and there enough, and that's going to take care of things. So he needs to play a little tighter than that. Good try. And good leave. You know, sometimes your ones and twos are really tough to play. A lot of the exhibitions I've done through the years, oh my goodness, when you're playing somebody that's a one, two, or even a three, sometimes 
they miss, but you have nothing to work with, and it becomes kind of funny after a while. I don't know if Clayton sees the humor in it right now, but... <laughs> And another wow. chance this time. I think she is, might be impeded by that seven a little bit. But again, makeable five. Another ball pocketed for Danielle, up to five points, needs 14. All right, Ava, we're going to do a little informal poll for all of our viewers, our 1,600 viewers. I'm curious to know who they're rooting for in this fifth and final match. Are you rooting for Danielle, the two? Are you rooting for Clayton, the nine? Or are you rooting for Gambler, one, or Control Your Rack? And finally, are you rooting for Florida or Georgia? <laughs> You've got that going, too. I feel like I know what people will say. Uh-oh. That's going to scratch there. Ooh. All right. Ball in hand to Clayton now. Six oh no! Ball there. Ooh, I thought he was heading towards the side there for a second. So did he. He kind of looked up in the sky going, okay. Eight in the corner. Two more points left on the table for Clayton. Who would once again have the break? No problem there. Clayton now with 14 points in his race to 75. Danielle with five points in her race to 19. All right. Based on the responses, I think it's closer than I thought. But mm -hmm. A lot of folks rooting for Danielle. Yes. The underdog. Well, if you don't have kind of a horse in the race, then that tends to be it. Yeah. Clayton with the break once again. Strong break, mm -hmm. two balls on the break, seven in the six. It's flirting with a side pocket there, but it worked out, but the problem now is where the three ball is. He can't really reach it. I think, you know, just go ahead and just tap this one ball and leave the cue ball right there behind the two. It's just a speed shot. You don't have to be a hero here. Just, again, be patient, be smart. And loosen up. That's the only, those are the only three ingredients he needs just an to beat this two here. Interesting comment says Danielle won in sudden death in both the quarters and semis. Mm, so she can handle the pressure. So That's she's why she's been on some in some big moments. Yeah, I don't know that any of those were against a nine, but 
big moments she's had. Clayton going to use the bridge here. Content to play a defensive shot. I think that we're going to see a timeout here, though. Yep. This is one of those, if he can get her to shoot a straight-on stop shot just below center a little bit. Oh. Yeah, he's going to take the timeout. That's going <clears> to <throat> put her, him in a kicking position. This is a, not a bad time to take a timeout. And again, we've never seen... Gambler one walk away from a rack without having taken a timeout because he takes them early. Well, and I mean, when you're trying to guide a two yeah. versus a nine, I, in, in that case, it makes a lot of sense. He's just sure. trying to get a couple points each rack. Understanding that Clayton, once he's at the table, may not. Uh... He's going to try. He's trying to get her to do the hit and stick right there and perfectly executed. Smart coaching. All she had to do is hit it straight on. He got her to aim the right way and hit center ball. And some work to do for Clayton here. Not to give ball in hand. I think he can go two rails. He went one rail. Oh, that was unfortunate. A little frustration there at the end of that shot for Clayton, but difficult shot here for Danielle against the rail. Yeah, that's going to make it tougher. But it is close to the pocket, so if she can take a short backstroke here and just kind of tap it, and then she'll just deal with the two ball later. Hit about half the ball. She there got you it. go. Another point for Danielle, up to six. Yeah, the game itself will give a player like Danielle, who's a skill level two, one, two, three, whatever, against a nine, enough opportunities just by the game messing with the situation, whether it's scratches. Oh, that's going to go <laughs> in. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Like I said, the game itself has an idea what's going on, so you cannot be giving up anything easy. And not only that, wow. but how sweet did that physician land? Absolutely. This is a tough, tough, tough situation here for Clayton. Things. Pockets the three in the corner, up to eight points. Ava, she is 11 away from victory. Yeah. But... You know, we, I run a league at Coastal Carolina APA, and I got to tell you, I've seen this happen many, many, many times of a two or three beating skill level nine. Like I said, if you're going to go up against somebody like that and stop them at so many points, you have to, have to, have to play like a nine. You can't play sloppy. You can't make too many mistakes. Or you're going to be in trouble. But with his Venus skill level 9, it's not over yet. All of a sudden, he can. I'm alive here and make something happen.
Clayton pockets the eight in the corner, now shooting on the nine ball. Two more points on the table. Oh, wow. Rattles the nine, Ava. Two more oh, points boy. available for Danielle. And the break, if she makes it. Yeah. Wow. And again, the table breaks. It's sweet when you hit it softly. And if she makes a ball or two, I don't know. It's looking gloom, gloomy right now for Control Your Rack out of Atlanta, Georgia. Clayton struggled a little bit. Things, a few things have gone Danielle's way as well. She's played, done exactly what had to be done for her. She's missed some, made some. But to keep her at 18 points, unless he's playing well. But this is the finals, and we got we, we might it might still go either way. So let's sit back and watch. Needs to shake it off and forgive himself here and just snap out of it. Chance for Danielle with the break. Pick up another point or two. Well, I'm going to say congratulations, too. I don't think see the actual final but we have a our first team from Singapore that yeah. was here which is pretty awesome finished in the top 16 in the nine ball that's pretty incredible World championship absolutely and they only ended up playing with five players yeah from what I understand yeah did only five come or did could they only play five players I mean I, um, <clears throat> I think they might have had six but one was not eligible to play oh okay so, yeah, they, they played with five. All right, Danielle with the break. With the Gamblers out of Gainesville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing on the break. All right, it's uh, pretty yeah. close to do or die time here, Clayton. You got a sweet layout here on the table. There are no issues. Nothing is tied up. Everything has a pocket. Even though it's not impossible, the only thing I can see being a bit of an issue would be the 6 to the 7 position. He needs to come straight up for this three. Really pick your spot. There's no such thing as kind of over there. It's one of those where if you kind of get good position, you're going to get kind of less good position after that, even if you're making it and it's downhill from there, especially when you start out being out of line in the beginning of a rack. All right, let's see. Key shot here because the seven ball is on the rail. Really pick where you want to be. I would play this in the corner. Oops. Well, we've managed to keep quite the crowd here at Pool Dog Arena, if it's possible. Ava, I think the crowd has grown. A lot of folks now standing off the corners. Mm -hmm. Time out here for Control Your Rack. This is Jacob Ritter.
coming out to talk to his captain. And sometimes you just need to talk sure. about it, you know? Or just maybe say, hey, relax, play yeah. your game. Clayton leading 25 to 10, but again, there is a considerable point differential. Clayton's got to get to 75 points, so he needs 50. Danielle needs to get just to 19. She needs nine more points. And the winner of this match will be your championship team. A two versus a nine for twenty thousand dollars. Not sure I agreed with that timeout, but just can't risk taking the six ball. I mean, uh, making the six ball and controlling the table. But I would definitely bank this seven ball if it were me and get the cue ball up right about in this area to play the eight in the corner. So what you don't want to do is try to cut this in and have it just hang in the pocket. You better feel real confident you're going to make it if you're going to cut it. But right now, part of, part of his job is to play tight and make sure that Danielle does not get any points out of this rack. And if he does that, at least he could just play position with the cue ball on the rail to play the eight in the same pocket. No, he went for the... Is he going to get lucky? No. Nope. Danielle with an excellent shot here at the seven in the side. And even the eight ball. If she just taps it now, she may end up rolling straight in on the eight. Depending what side, how thick she ends up hitting the seven ball. She's got the seven <clears throat> and another point up to 11. And let's be honest, it's a makeable eight. I don't care if you're a two or not. Always make easier to make these shots when you see the rail. It kind of helps guide you as far as what part of the ball to hit to make it go instead of it being out in the middle of the table. Oh, overcut it. Chance for Clayton to finish out this rack. Three more points on the board. Somebody made a good point. We haven't, you know, Clayton has not played a lot of defense in this match. No, I think early he, he failed on one or two of the defensive shots, and I think that after that he just, I don't know. You know, everybody is... And he's not playing, I'm sure, the way he normally does. I can tell that he struggled a little bit with, that was a good stroke there, the mm -hmm. best stroke of the day, I think. But he seems to be struggling a little bit with with the table being different from even the semifinal table. But more than anything, he, you know, once you start making mistakes or missing or anything like that, it's kind of difficult to come back. Well, he will have the break once again. Such an outstanding match here to cap off a great tournament here in Las Vegas. You know, sometimes, Ava, the, the matches are lopsided or just, you know, slow, but this match has been fantastic. It's been I mean, great. It really this has, has been interesting. The pace has been good. Uh, the the matchups have been interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, the crowd's been great hanging in here. Again, it's standing room only. We've got people in the in the back section of seats now. <laughs> I know. They're watching, they're watching it up, it up on, the on the screen. The TV, yeah. yeah, that side is com almost completely full there from the area where the semis were played in. Clayton asking for an adjustment to that rack, from the referee.
Oh, the last stroke on the eight ball told me a lot. If he can keep that smooth stroke going, then you never know. Again, he's his skill level nine. If he finds a way to forgive himself from mistakes early on, oh, wow, Ooh. that's not going to help. And look where the nine ball is. Ooh. Ooh. Look where the nine and the two. <laughs> oh, wow. Here comes a timeout from Raymond. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ray. We'll call where it for Ray? you. Timeout. Well, yeah, yes, of I course. So. <laughs> Ball in hand on the one. Put it dead straight in and close. Then three points. Yeah, you got uh, two nine combo after that. That would put her only five points away. There goes the one for another point. She is up to 12. And she's going to attempt the 2 9 combination now. She just makes contact with any part of the outside part of the two. Short backstroke and just follow through. There it is. Two more huge points, Ava. She's oh, up wow. to 14. Five points away from victory. She's got the break once again. And those are the ones I was talking about where that's just going to happen in a match. Unless your your nines break and run out or break and, and you know, snooker. The, the sooner or later, little things are going to happen for a two to be able to get... A shot. Part of me felt like, you know, I've seen a lot of teams where they'll put up a four or a five against a two instead because of the length. Unless the nine is like a super, super strong nine, loves the pressure. But even so, it's tough. 19 points in eight, you know, eight racks or more. I mean, that's, I don't know. It's tough. Five points away from victory for Danielle Ogden of the Gamblers out of Gainesville, Florida. And another dry break and a scratch to boot. So ball in hand to Clayton and a chance to... And right off the bat, look at that, what he's got to look at. That could have been prettier for him needing to get something going here so if it were me i wouldn't even make this one ball i'd try to play safe and just park it here get this one ball down in this area so then it's easier to deal with the two ball but from here i don't know obviously he can get down here also and play safety on the two But to try to do something and, and break something open at this point, there's, I just don't see a reason for it because that's how things can go awry there if you're doing, trying to do too much. Just remember, you need to control the table. And make things as difficult on Danielle as you possibly can. I will remind our viewers to please be respectful of the participants regardless of how they're playing or we will be happy to remove you yeah, the, from the page. Just don't be ridiculous. You guys don't have no idea what's going on out here. And you're allowed to have an opinion, but sometimes, you know what? It's kind of like... Just be respectful. It's like Pooh Bear said. If you can't say something nice... Yeah, these are human that beings Bambi? out here yeah. that are... That might have been... Bambi. Playing their hearts out. Well, he pockets the one, but leaves himself an interesting position. The two ball and the seven.
Really strong shot there. Perfect speed. Danielle's taking a peek here to see if she can see in the edge of the two ball. And she's queuing like she can. Just got to be careful not going into that seven. Or the eight. So foul with a scratched boot. So ball in hand once again to Clayton. And I think we're in that position again. It, the issue I can see here is getting from the four to the five. This pocket is blocked. So position wise, I see that's the only real challenge in this rack for him to run out. It's a lot of quite a bit of traffic there with a seven and eight. If you're just tuning in, you're watching coverage of the APA World Nine Ball Championship from here at Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. And we are as close as we can get as far as match points. Forty to forty. Winner of this match takes it all. This is Clayton Fisher at the table for the team Control Your Rack out of Atlanta. Clayton, the team captain in skill level nine. Pockets oh, the three oh. in the side, but. Mm, that's going to be close. I don't know. At least he jacks up <clears throat> and spins it, but I think may, he may just have to take his medicine here and go come around either two rails this way or or go straight into him. I don't think he can. Oh, it's too long. Does not get to the four ball. Ball in hand to Danielle. Wow. Chance to pick up another point. Well... To the four to fall. She's to 15 points. I think anybody that that has played long enough, especially as a quote-unquote favorite because you're the better player or whatever, can relate to Clayton. I was playing another professional player at one point on a TV match, and I was playing strong, coming on strong, and the other player had made some mistakes, and the other player actually missed with ball in hand. And mm. This is one of the best <clears throat> players in the world. In the world, missing <laughs> yeah, right. with ball in hand, you know, obviously focused on their next shot or whatever. But the fact that we can do it, I'm telling you, and I've seen every situation in the pros too, but Clayton is feeling enormous pressure. I'm sure there are quite a few higher skill level players out there that can relate and have played the lower skilled yeah. players and kind of know Absolutely. the challenges that come with that, especially Absolutely. in nine ball. The race differential. Combined with the unpredictability. Yes. Of like like not getting any leaves here. And Clayton goes, I need to get something started. But can I get something easier than this? But again, this is where Clayton needs to control. Not be upset because he doesn't get a shot. But he's got to now create a situation where he can get a shot. Even if he doesn't like this. Can't take any chances. There, smart. He wants it to go. Oh. Trying to make things difficult for Danielle. Yeah. Knows that she is getting ever so close to that magic number of 19. Mm. Getting 
Again, $20,000 on the line here. Oh, wow. Oh, she hit that well. She's getting some love if you can hear it from the audience out here. Three points away from victory. Danielle Ogden has a shot on the six. Oh. Cannot pocket the six. Gonna bring Clayton back to the table here. I liked Aunt Danielle's attitude ever since this started. She looks like, okay, I'm just gonna step up and do my thing, and then I'm gonna sit yep. down. She's. This is her tenth match here at the championships, so. As yep. we said, she played a sudden death. At least we were told she played a sudden death quarterfinal and semifinal. So, and for their for she's their she's been nine, under the gun before here. Yeah, the but for their nine to play Raymond, they've played a very similar. There's been five players playing every single time except Trey. Skill level six has played one match. Other than that, it's been the same five players playing every round. Mm hmm. And it's worked. And that's a lot of matches. Landon Fox said that her, Danielle's quarterfinal match came down to the very, very last ball. Mm. A lot of drama out here in Las Vegas at the championship. Oh, too firm. Holy smokes. Yeah. He's... Holy smokes. Six ball is down, Ava. She is two points yep. away from victory in the nine ball world championship. Unbelievable. And she's feeling it. <laughs> I'm feeling it for her. I know. <laughs> Going for it here. No, goes after the seven ball. Everybody and again, nothing. The table. Frustration kind of shows on Clayton's face here. That was a good shot there. Nice safety. Some love there for Clayton. All right, this is the shot you've been waiting for here, Clayton. Clayton pockets the eight.
He's getting back up again. He wasn't feeling comfortable it's all there. Right. He understands the importance of these two points yeah. with this nine ball. He does not want to leave it hanging in the pocket. I don't blame him. There you all go. All right. Did what he had to do there to stay alive. Two more points for Clayton. And he will have the break. Yeah, Clayton has given her a few opportunities. I think one time, she, twice she's made two balls in a row, but it's been so many times that he's either been a little careless, failed a defensive shot or missed, but a lot of, you know, ha the other half of it has been the game itself has given her some opportunities, so... Again, if you're going to make 75 points, you can't too make too many mistakes, and Clayton has made a few. And we'll really see. just hasn't put together, I mean, no breaking no, runs, no, no, you know, I mean, you kind of what you might expect to see from right, nine. Right, right. Just hasn't gone that way. A few mistakes, a few bad opportunities. Yeah. And credit to Danielle. She's oh, absolutely. done what she needed to, when she needed to. Some great coaching that has helped her, no doubt about it, especially that one ball and then the two-nine yeah. combo. That was a big three points. But she's... Uh... We're looking at the spot she's of the two-ball She's played solid, there. too. Yeah, they're asking him to go back just a little bit with the cue ball there. There's no line drawn on the uh, table, so I guess he's gone a little bit too close. Let him go back a little bit. So the base of the ball is behind the line. Keeps breaking from the same place, and neither so does Danielle, and neither one of them have been making a ball, and so far if somebody has made a ball pretty much almost on every rack, but they have not changed position, either he or Danielle. I'm going to get a timeout here. No, 100% right, Hope. There's no question about it. He's just not, hasn't been playing up to his ability, that's all. Danielle hasn't done anything but play like a two, so whoever does, thinks that's different, you guys just need to I don't go take a nap or something. <laughs> She's just held it together. And, and she has been incredible as far as following the coaching. Coaches, yeah. yeah. Been a real difference maker for this team. And there you go. The nice, one. nice coaching. Nicely executed. Wow. Well done. All right, nice got to start there. somewhere, right? He's going to start a run here. It was one. This is obviously an, a make. Question is where is the two ball going to go after this? He needs to hit kind of s s straight on this three for the two to stay there. I can't cut it too much. All right, that'll work. You bring out the cue ball right back towards where the, it is now. Like a little bit less angle. Oh, because of that. Oh, I mixed up the four and five. I take that back. You don't want too much angle here. Hmm. I 
Not too bad. This is your four here, and here's the five. So anywhere up here, just go straight up in this position, and he'll have a good shot on the four to come across for the five ball. It's kind of a, still a little bit of a tricky run out here, mostly because of where the nine is. So he's going to need an angle on the five. I mean on the four to get up for the five, sorry. Oh, wow. Pockets the three, sends the cue ball down table right into the corner for the scratch. And yet another, another ball, ball in hand, hand for yep. Danielle yep. to pick up another big point. Wow. Mm. Shooting on the four. And remember, timeout has already been taken here in this rack for yeah. Danielle. And this is the situation here. She should just put this right there and make sure she makes that four and that puts her on the hill. Mm -mm. She's trying to she's trying to run out. Forget that. I want to <laughs> make the four and get on the five. I want to do it in style here. Two points in here. There's one. There's the four. And she did it. She, she is she, one and point away, I think folks. she got... Oh, that's close. From the angle that you, we are all watching from right there, it looks like she can obviously hit the five, but can she get by the nine to make it? One more ball pocketed, and the party will be on in Gainesville for the gamblers. The folks back at Silver Q's. Just missed. All right. Another opportunity for Clayton. Got to be perfect from here on out, though, Ava. Perfect. 36 and then points down. Yeah. Cannot give up a single point from here on out. Viewership has surged over 2,000. Tuning in to see the Final moments of this nine ball world championship as Clayton pockets that ball. He's now at 40 points, needs 75. He is a skill level nine. Pockets the seven. Eight in the side. And he pockets the nine in the corner for two more points and the break. Last thing he wants to do is give up a break at this point or anything uh, can happen. Yeah. I'm interested if you see if he's pays attention, paid attention and moved his cue ball. He hasn't made any balls from the break, really, from where he's breaking from. At some point, you have to shake it up a little bit and either change the speed with which you're breaking them or where you're placing the cue ball. Whew, what a match this has been. I know. <laughs> Here in Pool Dog Arena, great look, full house. Everybody's sticking around to see how this one plays out. I don't know that we've had a more entertaining championship match this year, Ava. This has been fantastic. Well, it was a good way to end six days of streaming, six championships. And to end with this, this was kind of exciting. We started with the Jack and Jill. Then we went to... Eight ball, correct? Jack and Jill, eight ball world championship, ladies eight ball, masters, team, team captain. captain, and now the nine ball. Mm -hmm.
finale. Yeah, we kind of had all the eight ball on the front end, and then we migrated a little bit to the combination match, right? Mm -hmm. Masters and team captain, and now it's all about nine ball today. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. We've had some great matches. The fastest one by far, the fastest I, I think I've ever seen that may have broken a record was the Jack and Jill match. Yeah, the team captain match was very that quick was pretty last fast. night too. It was like some strange things happened, and yeah. it was you know some big scratch mistakes, on the eight yeah, and yeah. The end of that match. But. One team's mistake is another team's opportunity. You bet. Referee wanting to make sure he gets the rack right here. While we get a chance again, I want to, we all want to say thank you to all the referees, all the volunteers that make this amazing event happen, and to the production crew for this gorgeous set. Bill Tufts and everybody in the tournament, the staff, everybody that's been part of putting the production together. It's pretty amazing. I've so done a your... lot of ESPN events, but I'm telling you, this is every bit as amazing of a set and production. So thank you, guys. Here's his adjustment. Has moved to the other side. Now. Oh, you finally? Yeah, there you go. We'll see if that makes a difference for him. Nope. Dry break. Danielle needing one more point. One more big, <laughs> huge, <laughs> enormous point. And here comes, here comes Raymond. Captain Ray. <clears throat> Ray Raingale, who's done a really phenomenal job here, Ava. Let's see if he can well, guide Danielle this be something, to kicking it? in the yeah. one for the championship? This place will go crazy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. my. <laughs> 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 wow. This place was about to explode. That was the first smile I've seen, a reaction of any kind that I've seen wow. out of Danielle, too. She's been very focused. So close there. Wow. Tricky path here to get on the two. The table slides a lot, but he pulled nice. it off. That was a good, nice good, good shot. shot. Well done, Clayton. Clayton not going down without a fight. Heck no. I mean, I have a feeling Clayton has run three racks plenty of times before, and mm -hmm. that's all he needs to win. Two in the corner. And by all he needs, I don't mean it's just <laughs> oh, hum, three tag, racks, right? but. Well, what a comeback that would be. The way this match has been going, it wouldn't shock me. This is going to be take some doing, though, to get on this four ball. Nice shot. See, they're going to have to smooth stroke this with low right and get around that nine. We can go the safe right route and go up, play the combo. No, he played. That's perfect. Nice, smooth. That's kind of stroke we've been expecting here to see Clay come up with. Absolutely cannot give ball in hand, cannot scratch. Mm -hmm. Rich Carter says he plays better under pressure. Well, we'll see. If he doesn't feel this pressure, I don't know what. Fires in the five in the corner. Let's 
Six in the corner. That's that'll work. A little more angle maybe that he wanted, and I'm sure he didn't want to be on the rail, but can't be too picky. Eight ball goes now down to the nine. Two more points for Clayton. Don't count him out. Now at 54 with the break. You never know. You never know. Two racks for a skill level nine and then to make a ball on the break. Not over till it's over, people. Wow. Can you imagine? He pulls that off. He's got to make on the ball on the break first if he's going to do that. but Or get some luck. And not leave a shot for Danielle. When she's had a chance, she's made some good sh shots under the pressure herself. So it's never over till the last ball is pocketed. So here we go. Well, I'm going to make sure that rack is tight every time. Now Clayton has struggled a little bit on the brakes, making balls. So we'll see if even the last time he adjusted a little bit, still didn't make a ball. Mm -mm. Didn't leave much for Danielle, but see if he can send a couple balls to the pockets on the break. Clayton is a skill level nine. Danielle, a skill level two. Polar opposites going head to head, competing for $20,000. Clayton asks for the an adjustment in the rack. Well, obviously he's on the cusp here, so yeah, wants to do everything he can to hold on. We've got the referee and the floor manager out there right now in the pit area. And while they work through the rack, we'll give another shout out to our sponsors, PoolDog.com, Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls, and our friends at Diamond Tables. Great look here at Pool Dog Arena and the crowd that has joined us for this final match. Looking on final day in Las Vegas. For most of us, not all of us necessarily, but for most of us. We got some staff that actually stay till Monday, tearing down tomorrow, so. Oh, yeah. There's some, a lot of tearing down to do. folks trying to get the wave going in the crowd. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I'll do it. There we go. Uh, there it goes. There it goes. Starts well, here. We got there 12 we go there. Way. Oh, we're up to 20 there. There we go. <laughs> now get us in the middle. Here we go. Here we all go. Right, here we go. Let's go, Ava. All here right. we go. We got it. <laughs> Here it comes again. I, I was early. Here we go. First <laughs> time ever. 
Woo! And around and around we go. <laughs> I like it. All right, we're in. Almost the whole crowd. You not do the wave at a pool match. Never happened before, but I love it. I love it. You can't tell about the excitement here. We're going to keep this party going until they get that rack right. Nice. Nice. That was good. That was good. All right. Wave is done. <laughs> what an exciting environment. <laughs> Loving it. All right, Clayton. All right. Keep this Come party on, Clayton. going, Clayton. All right, he went back to the original spot again. Let's see if it works this time. He's breaking off the rail. Instead of all the way up, it's trying everything he's got here. Oh, just missed the scratch. Just missed the one ball, too. Dry break. Shooting for the win, Ava. And check it out. Going to take a timeout, and they're going for it. Here comes Raymond. This is all she needs is that one in the side. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. Going to get her lined up. Teamwork, teamwork. About to make the dream work. Oops. For the win, Danielle Thin Ogden. Thin to win, baby. Thin to win. She got there it. There it is. The two defeats the nine. David has beaten Goliath in your 2023 nine ball world champions from Gainesville, Florida. The Gambler. Wow. What a match, Ava. That was actually a great match from start to finish. A lot of drama. See if we can get a quick word with our newest champions gonna come over and shake hands with their opponents before they begin to celebrate what a match unbelievable finale to this year's APA World Pool Championships. <laughs> I think they're walking out. They're just leaving. Come back. We've got <laughs> prize money for everyone. A bunch of it. Trophies we got prize too. money, trophies. Come too. back over here. <laughs> Don't leave. Oh, what a match. Unbelievable. I don't know if... Ayana's going to have a chance to talk to them. Oh, here they come. They're coming back. They're coming back. Come on back, gambler there one. There will be plenty of time to celebrate tonight. This is where you hope you don't have the, you know, you're not taking the red eye home. <laughs> it's like, wait, why Why did right. we do that? I want to party flight. all night. Change our flights. <laughs> oh, wow. What a match. Great coaching there. By Raymond Rangale as Danielle Ogden finishes off that match. Great. <laughs> Congratulations on winning the 2023 Nine Ball World Championships. Tell me, how are you guys feeling about this today? Very tired. <laughs> Very tired. It's been a long tournament, and it's well worth it at the end. It's well worth it. Uh, Danielle, did you expect that you'd be facing a nine for $20,000 in the championship title? <laughs> It was either a nine or a five, so I didn't know which one. What was it like? Amazing. You know, it's just experience to be here is amazing. It was amazing. Well, does anybody have anything to say yeah. to the stream? We want to dedicate this uh, win to a friend of ours. They got passed away, Rick Wright. Are you, Rick? Who would you say the MVP player for your team is? Everybody. 
Everybody? Everybody. He's pointing to Danielle here. Congratulations, you guys. Yes. We want to thank every, all of our supporters back at home, uh, North Florida, APA, uh, Silver Q, and they, uh, they always backing us and all of our friends back at home. We're bringing home the trophy. We also had a lot of cheerleaders in the crowd. Yeah, we got Claudia here. She's just always here with all of our players from the beginning to the end. I don't know how she does it, but she does it every year. <laughs> well, again, congratulations, you guys. Jason, Ava, back to you. All right. Well, folks, exciting. congratulations to our new nine ball world team champions from Gainesville, Florida. Gambler won. They're taking home $20,000. Folks, we appreciate you tuning in today and throughout all of our coverage of this year's APA World Pool Championships. Thanks again to our friends at PoolDog.com for their support. And on behalf of all of us at the APA, thank you for tuning in.